Welcome back to another episode of Team Break Tuesday. We've got probably, maybe, five rounds of breaks that we're going to do tonight. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. As of right now, it looks like of one round is sold out. Looks like Box War Bud just sold out. Picked up an entire remainder of a round. Let's go ahead and show you what we have available and uh, if you want to grab some spots, you can. Box for Bud just grabbed all the teams in J12. He sold all of those out. BWB Box for Bud. Thank you very much. So, J12, he picked up Houston, Miami, Minnesota, San Francisco, St. Louis, and Toronto all in one swoop. And he is the hero of J12. So, we'll, we'll be doing that one shortly. Box for Bud, thank you very much. Brett Adams just picked up one in J6. And that one now with just a couple spots just uh, coming off the board. Now it's down to five spots for Manny. It said seven there because I did that like three minutes, four minutes before we went live. Five spots left there. It's a half jumbo round. Bright Sports, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you. I can't wait to go after it. Here's the teams left. J3, it's a half caser of jumbos. We've got Colorado at 20, Detroit at 20, Houston at 35, KC, Miami, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, San Diego, San Francisco, and St. Louis still available there. And in the hanger box rounds, I think both of these could go tonight. It's 32 boxes per round. Hanger box three is getting close. It's down to seven teams left. Here's the teams and their prices. And hanger box four has oh, maybe about 10, 11 spots left. 32 boxes in that round as well. Here's all the prices. And I'll just cross off the teams as people pick them up throughout the night. And then we'll go ahead and go. So I think we're going to start with J12. It is a pick your team round. And then maybe after that, the next closest to go is J6, which is another half case jumbo. And we'll randomize for those spots. And then after that, hanger boxes might be ready to go. So that's what we've got tonight. There's some new releases coming on the horizon. Signature series I just found out today got pushed back a week. So I was hoping to have it today. I contacted my case guy. I said, hey, can I come pick up the cases? And he said, actually, they're now not coming out until March 20th. So if you're looking for Signature Series today, that's pushed back. Bowman Inception is next week. Big League is in two weeks as well. But we do have a bunch of mixers that I just added, if you'd like to grab some spots there. We've got mixer box rounds. So let me go ahead and add Box War Bud to the lists here for J12. Then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I'll read off the teams. We're going to start off with... Jumbo round 12. Here's all the teams. We've got Jeffrey with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Michael Caven has the Atlanta Braves and also the Baltimore Orioles. We've got Joseph with Boston. Chris Randall has the Cubbies. Josh Leinbarger has the Reds. Raphael Soto has the Cleveland Guardians. David Vogt has the Colorado Rockies. Man, I need a new blade on this thing. Stephen has Stephen F has the White Sox and the Tigers. Boxwell Bud has the Houston Astros. Troy Gerhardt has the Kansas City Royals. Anthony Mariscal has the Los Angeles Angels. Josh Leinberger has the Dodgers. Boxwell Bud has the Miami Marlins. Anthony has the Milwaukee Brewers. Boxwell Bud has the Minnesota Twins. Raphael Soto with the Mets. Anthony Mariscal with the Yankees. Justin Fernandez with Oakland. Daniel Streelman has Philadelphia. Anthony Mariscal has the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mark Allen has the San Diego Padres. Michael Caven with Seattle. Box for Bud has both San Francisco, St. Louis, and Toronto. Raphael Soto with Tampa Bay. Chris Andrade has Texas. And Raphael Soto has Washington. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. It's Series 1 to get us started. And again, I put it. I put out eight different mixers. I put those together if you want to grab some spots in the mixers as well. We've got those up for grabs. Let's get this show on the road. Here's our very first pack. There's Matt Olson gold foil card in there. There's also an Aussie Albies. So a couple hits right there for the Atlanta Braves. Insert and a foil parallel to get us started. Hopefully we can get some good hits out of here. Jesus Lusardo to the Miami Marlins numbered card. Usually there's a, about two numbered cards per box. Kyle Ripken Jr. base card would have been cool if that was a relic or an autograph. We auctioned off one of those autographs. I think in our last consignment, we have another consignment coming up here soon. I actually got two consignments in the mail yesterday and today. We've got Ryan O'Hearn numbered to 499. Another Orioles hit. Michael Caven gets that one. Ryan O'Hearn actually starting to turn the corner a little bit after not really doing too much the first three, four years of his career. We used to joke around that he was 
just very unwelcome in our breaks because he would pop up all the time. He had tons of autographs in 2019, along with Cedric Mullins, that it just became too much. And we named whoever autograph is pulled the most during a specific calendar year to be the Mullins O'Hearn Award because literally every case had a Ryan O'Hearn autograph back in 2019. If you go back and watch some of those breaks that we did, did here. All right, so, so far we haven't hit anything in terms of relics or autos until now. We've got Julio Rodriguez. That's going to be a nice relic there. It's going to go out to the Seattle Mariners, which is for Michael Caven. So Michael Caven with the first relic, J-Rod. Not a bad pick for the MVP this year. He was my pick, but I'm starting to maybe doubt myself a little bit. I'm starting to think, what about Juan Soto in New York? Am I overlooking Juan Soto? He's ripping the ball to shreds this spring. Leads this everybody in home runs. At least tied for the lead with four, hitting 500. There's Mike Trout. Hopefully he can stay healthy this year. I'd love to see that. I'm going to keep a close eye on his rookie card, 2011 update, and see what that does throughout this year. Last year was kind of fluctuating around 12 to 1300 in the offseason. It went down to about 1000 Actually, we saw it dip down to like 900 There may have even been some sales like in the upper 800s for that card. Where is that card going to stop? About two years ago, it was a $3,000 card. I think people are starting to get a little wary of Mike Trout and his injury issues. And here we go. We have got Vinny Pasquantino. It's going to be our second relic. There's two relics per box now. Troy Gerhardt's going to have that one, so now we're just waiting for the autograph, which I hope it's going to be a good one. Brand new case. I just cracked this one open. Josh Leinbarger just picked up some teams in Mixer 8 and Bowman's Best 9. So, Josh, thank you very much. We'll see if we can get Mixer 8 going. Or maybe Bowman's Best Round 9. I think it's my last case of Bowman's Best that I have. All right, let's see what we've got in the next box. Lots of sorting in the future. We've got a Max Muncy. This is going to be a City Connect relic. Wow, we've got a hot box here for relics. So far, we've had Max Muncy number to 50. We had Vinny Pasquantino, and we had J-Rod three relics in one box. What's up with that? I don't know, but we'll take it. Not too shabby. That's number 250 right there on the City Connect. White Sox Tom says that Garrett Cole probably will need Tommy John surgery. Anytime you hear, like, sore elbow, and uh, there he is, by the way, but led the entire majors in a war, 7.5 last year. Got the red ink right there. That's, that's bad news for the Yankees. If he has to have Tommy John surgery, he'll miss all of this year if that happens. And then probably a little bit of next year as well. It's usually the recovery time is like 12 to 15 months. So he might not make it back till the All-Star break next year if he needs Tommy John. I hope he doesn't. I love Garrett Cole. There is a Nick Fortes, which will be numbered to 299. If it does happen, though, well, then the Yankees might turn their sights to Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery. And Audrey says, thanks for the Vlad and Chapman dual auto. You're welcome. I've got that still sitting on the sleeping table, and I'm I was planning on sending it to you with your next package, which will be with the stuff for tonight. And uh, we don't have an autograph yet. There's one more pack left on the table. They gave us three relics, zero autographs. What's up with that? Might be coming right here. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. It, we've got it. It's Sunny Gray for the Twins. Nice 89 tops on card auto. The Minnesota Twins are owned by Box War, but BWB gets the hit right there. That's deserved since he bought out the entire rest of the break. So Box War, Bud, congrats on that. Thank you very much. Moving on to box number two of the half caser here. The next roundup we'll be doing, it looks like it's going to be J6, which currently has. Let me check on it. I got to make sure I add Josh to mix eight. Josh Linebarger and also Bowman's Best. Getting both of those. If you want to get in, there's still five spots left in the next round. Five spots, and it's a random team round. And then we've got all these uh, spots left for J13. These spots are also listed on Patreon. Hanger boxes. You can see the teams there. There you go. All right, so just in case you're trying to get in, 
bring it up periodically between boxes. Yankees in trade talks with the White Sox for Dylan Cease, says Audrey. Wizzy says, anyone know when Heritage is coming out? Yeah, not until April 10th. Ross says, I'll take Tampa and Hangar 3. They are still available. You can send in for them right now, Ross, and I'll get you added to the list. Heritage went on sale today. Chris says, if anyone else buys in the Hangar Box 3, I'll pick up the Pirates. Lonnie says, did you get my message from earlier? I did not. I didn't get a message from you. Best way to send me a message is just send me like one cent or request one cent through PayPal with a message attached. And I'll see it. Let's see. There's Griffey as we move on to the next box. Jared Triolo. I'll get those foil cards all sleeved up. Ross, true to his word, just picked up Tampa Bay and the hanger box round three. So Tampa Bay going to Ross B. You can go ahead and delete them. That hanger is getting kind of close. There's, what, six teams left now, I think? There they are. Those are left. White Sox stops says Yankees are going to need to give up Spencer Jones and some other players for Cease. Yeah, that's true. They managed to hang on to him in the Juan Soto deal. But he's yeah he's a he's a big prospect he's probably gonna have to go. Dylan Cease is a top of the rotation type talent. So Yankees I guess would rather part with prospects than pay up for Blake Snell. I guess Blake Snell has always been a little bit of a little little bit of a question mark. I mean he's had like two great seasons. He's won the Cy Young Award in both of the seasons, but some of the other years he's been just kind of been a little erratic lots of walks there's andrew vaughn number 273 48 of 73 that's a nice card michael garcia there as well bb says how do i get one of these teams just send it in if you're a patreon member just send it on in with the note attached and we'll get you at it brantley's a new member thanks very much thanks for watching i appreciate that glad to have you aboard there is Juan Soto. I can't believe spring training is coming up here. Or what should I say? Coming up. I'm going to be headed to spring training near the end of this month. Can't believe that is coming up. Nothing in this one. Austin says, I'd rather have Trevor Bauer. I think a lot of us would like to have Trevor Bauer on our team. We've got a Alex Bregman. Here comes the Relics. I wish the Pirates would sign Trevor Bauer is willing to sign a a base level, bare minimum contract with incentives. So he'll play for whatever it is, seven hundred thousand dollars or whatever, whatever a rookie makes, and then he'll he'll have incentives in there. So if he pitches X amount of innings, he'll probably get a couple million dollars or whatever, X amount of strikeouts. I think most of it should be based on on innings because if you're a successful pitcher. They're going to run you out there. And uh, also, if you're staying healthy and piling up the innings, you deserve to be paid. So I bet you if he does sign, it will be based largely on innings pitched. There's Henry Davis. Keith Nero, channel member for 13 months, says, thanks for all you do, Eric. Keith, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, new Keith, I can't wait till you get your next Nero mystery packs put together the next series. Those are always fun to open. We haven't done one of those in a while. Ross says, if 2023 Heritage is $65, why is 2024 95 I don't know. I saw that price today, and I was like, what is this crap? $95 for a Heritage box with one hit, which is likely going to be a relic three out of four times. There's Chris Bryant. I guess they think maybe everybody really, really likes the 1975 Topps design. And that's going to... That's going to fuel it, but, man, I'll tell you. I said I said something about that, by the way, the other day, Ross. I don't know if you were listening in. I can't remember what live stream, but I was talking about how my retail case guy wanted more for Heritage Blaster cases than he did for either Series 1 or Big League. I was like, why are these, I was thinking, why are these $70 more per case? Do they have something special planned that... We don't know about. Did they increase the autos so that there's a bunch more autos per case rather than just usually three? We've got Abner Uribe. It's going to be the next hit. 
And this one's going to go to Milwaukee. The Milwaukee Brewers in this round are owned by Anthony Mariscal. So you've got that one. And Daniel Bard. Ross says, I heard that. I hope you didn't buy any. I did not yet, but I, I feel like I probably will buy some for Patreon members. That's the thing. I, I, I need to get in for the Patreon members. Maybe I could wait, but I don't know. I like having those guaranteed boxes sitting there. Here's the next one up. Uh, Lonnie says, I bought into Big League One, not Bowman Inception. I see it now, Lonnie. I, I'll fix it. Thank you very much for looking at that. And it's fixed. Yeah, sometimes I make mistakes, especially you know, when there's a lot of the same letters being used. So I fixed that for you. Also, another payment came in for J6. Actually, it looks like two payments. We've got Anthony Mariscal grabbing a spot in J6 and Perceived Power Sports grabbing a spot as well. That now takes the next round from five spots available to just three. So three spots left. J6 is going next. If you want to grab one of the remaining three teams, it's a random team round. So you'll find out live right before we open the boxes what team you get. There's Ozzy Albies, another hit. It's game used bat for the Atlanta Braves. So that one is going to go to Michael Caven. Got Mackenzie Gore there as well. Jose Altuve. And moving on to our final pack. The last pack had the autograph. This time the autograph was, I don't know, pack six. So I don't know if there's anything in here or not. Brett Adams just grabbed another one. So there's two spots left now. Got Trent Grissom, who will be on the Yankees this year. Great fielder, but can't really hit all that well at all. Usually that average is super low. Last year he hit 198, the year before 184. Still puts up two plus wins above replacement because of his defense. But Trent Grissom sometimes looks a bit lost up there at the plate. He'll most likely be probably a fourth outfielder for the Yankees, I would imagine. Ross says, every year Heritage Blaster Boxes end up coming down to $15 to $20. Look what happened to 2022 and 2023 Heritage. Yeah, actually, around Black Friday, they were $10. Did you see that deal, Ross? Blowout Cards had a case for $3.99. So they always do come down, but I always try to get the newest stuff for the Patreon members. So this month, just because there's no new blaster boxes out, it'll be series one again for March. I'm already putting those together. Big league doesn't come out till the very end of the month. Those blaster boxes. So those will be in April. We'll give you a chance to pull one of those influencer cards. And usually big league is pretty good with autographs too. So maybe here it is will be the may box. So maybe I should just wait to buy them. I don't know. Here's our final box of this first round. Got a gold foil card there. Nothing really in that first box. The silver packs are all piling up. Chris says he'll buy in the big league. Nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I really hope we can find the Jabs Family influencer card. And what we'll do is we'll give away $1,000 to the first person to find it. And then every subsequent person will get a hundred. So I think it'll pro I think that that's fair. I, I feel like the card will probably sell for around fifty near opening day because I feel like a lot of the influencer cards started off around fifty ish, fifty sixty, and then they kind of drop off a little bit. You can get some of them now for like seven bucks. Here is our next hit, Shohei Otani, Home Sweet Home. That's a good card right there for Los Angeles Angels. Anthony Mariscal gets this one. It's numbered to 299. Shohei Otani. Um, the mix says, is it 1,000 in your stream, not someone who tells you they have it right? Yeah, it's it's got to be in my stream. Yep, it's not going to – because otherwise someone could just buy it on eBay for 50 bucks and then be like, hey, I got your card. I've got to pull it. I want I want to buy back the first card that I pull of myself. When does Bowman Inception come out? It was supposed to be this week on the 15th, but I, I everything keeps getting pushed back. I think now it's 
the 23rd or something. It's frustrating how stuff gets moved around. Nothing going on there. Next pack up. J6, it should be on Patreon. I, 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 did I accidentally delete it? Scroll down. It's right beneath Hobby 2. It's The live price is 42 99 So 43 We got Sandberg here. Ryan Sandberg. It's a blue. We'll get that one sleeved up for Chris Randall. Nice team color match. Royal blue, not numbered. Ellie De La Cruz, 89. Mr. Invincible's in the house. J6 is almost sold out. Currently, there are... Let me see how many spots are left. Two spots left. Get Brett Adams penciled in. Yep, two spots remain. Max Freed starts off this next one. Dane Dunning, there's George Brett. Ross says, I can't speak for everyone, but I think Series 1 2024 Blasters would be more popular than Heritage Blasters and Patreon packages. Here's the thing, though. By the time it's time to put Heritage Blasters in, Series 1 will be old, like real old, like th th almost three months old. So I feel like I'd probably stick with whatever's the newest. The Furkinator's in the house. Owen Furkinado. Fur <laughs> Owen Furco. What's up, man? Chris says he'll buy a spot in J6. Sounds good. I don't think anyone else grabbed those last two spots if you want one of them. Actually, there's one spot left. Vince grabbed one. There's one spot left, and Chris says he wants the other one, so we're sold out. For the Jumbo Round 6. If Chris is sending it in, indeed, we'll be sold out. There's Dominguez. We'll sleeve his card up. A little bit of like white on that corner. That top right corner. Chris has paid. So we're all sold out. Here's what we've got left. If you're still wanting to get into a break tonight, we still have spots available. In all these pick your team rounds. The next closest one to go is the Hangers, right here. Colorado, Houston, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, and Toronto. So there's six teams left there. That's 32 boxes in that round. That's what would be coming up next after more jumbo boxes. All righty, we've got an autograph here. It's a good prospect, Curtis Mead of the Tampa Bay Rays. Nice prospect, and this one is going to go to... Rafael Soto has the Curtis Mead autograph. I remember reading up on him. He was a better prospect back when his first Bowman card came out a year or two ago. When do the Monster Boxes come out? For Tops? Or they all, they've already come out for Tops because I remember opening. I did a preview video on those. Remember? They're like 50 bucks. I haven't seen them in Walmart yet. Chris is hoping for the Pirates in J6. That would be nice. Hey, Grant, how's it going? We've got Garrett Cole, game-used jersey with a pinstripe. There's Griffey, 89. Yohan Duran. And we're down to our last pack now. The Super Boxes? I don't know. I should have ordered some. I just figured, I'm, I'm not going to order these. I can just go and buy them at Walmart. I should have ordered some. Yeah, I haven't seen those yet. I don't think there's... They're going to be anything all that different or all that great. Probably have those foil cards again. Retail says Monsters will be in your Walmart restock this week. Monster boxes. I don't know if I'll buy any more of those. I already bought some from Fanatics when they were released. They were okay. Lots of base cards. Not a lot of numbered cards. We did a preview on those. They're, eh, be, I don't know. Crosses are the best option. They do have more cards. It's basically a monster box is, is uh, you know, dollar, dollar for dollar about two and a half blasters. The mix is calling two parallels and one auto. I'm going to call two parallels zero 
autos. So let's see what we can do here with all these. Brandon says, I opened a monster yesterday. It was not great. Yeah, from what I remember, I think there's only like maybe one or two numbered cards in the whole box. I was just, I, there was more base cards, but I, I remember feeling underwhelmed. So far, a little underwhelming. There's Christopher Morrell for Chris. Got a Nolan Ryan here, which is going to be numbered to 99 for Houston. And so one parallel and an autograph. How about that? So Mix, you were closer. You said two parallels, one auto. I said two parallels, zero autos. Jordan Westberg. It will be numbered out of 199. Very last card of the break. A little nice bonus hit there goes to Michael Caven. Akatak said something. I pay for two spots of J6. Will you apply it to another break? I don't care which one it is. How about, let's see here. It came up under Tobias. Also, Earl Rowe. We're sold out of J6, by the way. I don't have any spots left. So if you'd like to apply that payment towards a hanger team or a, a jumbo team, Earl and Tobias, you can pick uh, you know, pick your pick your poison. Tell me which which way you want to go with it, and I'll get you added in. Because um, J6 is all sold out. Yep, there's some payments that came in after you, whereas Chris is. So J12 in the books. Dwayne just became a new channel member. Thanks, Dwayne. Check out our channel member Monday videos. Just did a garage tour of my messy, messy garage for the channel members last night. That's the fourth installment. Julia just picked up Toronto in Hangar Box 3. So, Julia, thank you very much. We'll go ahead and delete Toronto. So, you want Pitt and Colorado, says Akatak. That's Tobias. You got it. Pitt and Colorado are gone. So, Tobias is taken care of. Tobias with Pittsburgh and Colorado. So now we just got to get Earl to find a home for his J6 payment that was sold out. So roughly $42 or so. So if you wanted to pick a team like Milwaukee or San Diego or St. Louis or something like that, you could, or maybe like two $20 teams or whatever. Some comments coming in. For the garage, Ross's wasn't as interesting as I was expecting. Told you so. The garage is what most cardboard collectors dream of. It's just a bunch of stuff out there. Brandon's looking forward to Signature Series. Dwayne says, I'll take St. Louis in my break. Dwayne, you got to send, just go ahead and send the payment in and we'll get you in there. Rose says, I'll take Milwaukee. All right, so Earl Rose got the brew crew. I'll put you right there and hang around three. That's coming up next after this J6 round. So Earl Rose taken care of. We got Houston and St. Louis left for that hangar box three. I'm going to make sure I don't miss any comments. Dwayne has been watching for years. Finally took the plunge. I'm glad to have you aboard, man. All right, so let's do it. Is there a link for the payments? Just with PayPal. Yeah, we sell all of our spots on Patreon, so the PayPal email address is there. It's uh, ericj100 at yahoo.com. That's another post section on Patreon. Let's do this random team break. J6. It's all sold out. Got to use a randomizer to determine who's going to get what. So we'll go to random.org. If you look over here, get it on the screen here. I'm going to unplug my computer because it's not really reaching. Justin says, I had sent in for Hangar 3. Justin Fernandez. You'll have to let me know what team you wanted. Here's all of the spots in the sold-out round. I'm going to copy all of them. I'm going to paste them into this list randomizer right here. It's going to spit out a mixed-up list. Then I'm going to take that mixed-up list. Box for Bud just grab some spots as well. I'll check them all out here in a second. Randomize it, and then I'll copy this list and put it up against the template, and then we'll see who's got what. Steven Fresenda will have the first team, which will be the Arizona Diamondbacks. Then we've got Jeff Coulter with the Atlanta Braves. 
Chris Randall's got the Baltimore Orioles. Chance has the Boston Red Sox. Arthur Floyd has Chicago Browns with the Cincinnati Reds. Antonio's got the Cleveland Guardians. Anthony's got Colorado. Caleb has the Chicago White Sox. Drew has Detroit. Christopher has Houston. Sean has KC. Michael has the Angels. Brandon Limson has the Dodgers. Vincent Smith has Miami. Jack Holland has Milwaukee. Tiffany has the Minnesota Twins and also the Mets. James Mosley has New York, the Yankees. Steve May has Oakland. Perceived Power Sports has the Philadelphia Phillies. Brett Adams gets the Pirates. Patrick Cooley gets the San Diego Padres. Tiffany gets Seattle. Juan Solis gets the San Francisco Giants. Antonio gets the St. Louis Cardinals. Chris gets Tampa Bay. Brian gets Texas. Raphael Soto gets Toronto. And Bradley Burnett gets the Washington Nationals. All right, so let me get these boxes put on the screen here. One, two, and three, the other half of the case. And we'll see what we can do from these ones before we move into the hanger box round. Let me check on Justin Fernandez. Let me go ahead and see. Yeah, I see it now. It came in after they were already claimed. So what I can do is, since Milwaukee is pretty much the same, I can put you in J13, which is close to going. I'll just put you there. Literally the same, you know, same same price. Actually, actually I think it's a, a dollar more in J13, but I won't charge you an extra dollar for it. So you've got them, Justin Fernandez. And I see Thomas Hope also won in Milwaukee. Jeez, lots of Milwaukee lovers popping up here at the last second. Thomas, I'll put you in hanger box four. It's the same collation. It's 32 boxes. Same as eight hanger box three round. I'll just put you in that round. So we'll get them off the board. And who knows? Maybe that will end up going tonight. So we'll take them off the board. Milwaukee's off the board now. That's always helpful when there's other spots open in other rounds where we can just make it work, just fit you in like the exact same round, just with a different call letter, you know? Bernard May just picked up Houston and St. Louis. He just sold out hanger box round three. So box for Bud is, we, we should call him buyout Bud. He's buying out the brakes. You know, the hanger box three is all sold out. We'll be doing those next. Box for Bud picking up the last teams there by grabbing the Houston Astros and St. Louis Cardinals. Thanks, Box for Bud. And Ryan just grabbed a big league spot. Good luck, man. Ryan Heath Heine. All right, so let's get into this. You know your teams. We just randomized them. I just want to do that clerical work and get everything all caught up. Buy out Bud. Want to help with J13, says Chris. Let's see if we can find... BB4 says he got a Nelvi Marte autograph. That's a good autograph. Unfortunately, he just got suspended for steroids. So that may harm the value a little bit in the near future. Don't know if his card values will bounce back from that. Usually steroids, well, usually hurts long term we've got john gray gold just look at what happened to uh tatis cards <laughs> you can get his psa 10 rookie card for like 15 10 15 bucks now and i was buying it for 225 dollars back at the height of the pandemic before his suspension so a rangers gold card first numbered card we've got john gray in this next one, there's Ellie De La Cruz base. Got to get that one in the sleeve. And on to the next pack. Let's see what we can find in this. Oh, we've got a Golden Mirror image variation coming up. It's going to be Joe Adele. Very nice. Joe Adele for the Los Angeles Angels. That one goes to Michael McCann. So Michael McCann with the Adele. Very, very nice. Thomas says, I paid for 88 for Pitt and Milwaukee and Hanger. Can I get those teams in Hanger Box 4? Yeah, I didn't even see Pitt. Thomas Hope 
Yeah, I see. You didn't even put you didn't even you're right here. You didn't even put Pittsburgh on there. You just put Milwaukee, but I see that the price point reflects Milwaukee and Pittsburgh. So yeah, you've got Pittsburgh and Hanger Box 4 as well. I'll add you the list right now, Thomas. And I got lucky I saw the notification there. If you ever want to just uh point something out, just go ahead and get in the live chat with us. It's a little easier. And we've got moderators that'll put up the sirens and be like, hey, we've got uh, I've got an issue here, and they'll point it out for me. Antonio says, I have two teams. Yep. J14, you were the only person in that round, Antonio. So I figured let's not make you wait another, I don't know, two, three weeks. We'll just move it into this one. It's literally the same exact break, just with a different letter. So, yep, that's why you've got two teams in here. I just canceled that, that round and just combined it. Grant says, got to go. All right, man. BB says, my friend also got a box of this. Didn't have an auto. If he calls them, will they ship them an auto? They will, but you're going to have to. There's Joey Votto, game used bat. It's a nice one right there for the Cincinnati Reds. Who's got the Reds in J6? That is for Brett Adams. So, Brett, congratulations. What they want is they want you to, uh, if you're missing an auto, you're going to have to send them an email or contact them, and then you're going to have to provide proof of purchase with the UPC code, and then they'll send you a replacement auto. At least that's what people have told me. Sometimes I've done boxes, like personal boxes for people, and they've shorted us an autograph, and that's kind of nice because it's on camera, so they, they have to believe you. It's literally 4K video proof of it. And then whenever that happens, I just cut out the UPC, and I put that in their team bag so that they can have that. And then they also have the proof of purchase through PayPal, their PayPal receipt that they paid for the boxes with. All right, on to the next pack here. Bo Naylor starts this next one off. Hanger box rounds coming up next. Paul Seawald right there. But who knows, maybe we'll get back and do another round of jumbo boxes tonight. We've got that J13, which is moving a little bit. Maybe we'll kind of clear out a lot of the 2024 Series 1 breaks tonight. There's Paul O'Neill to the New York Yankees. That one is for James Mosley, baseball star autograph. Congratulations on that one. You also get an Aaron Judge foil card in that pack. It's a good Yankees pack right there. And we've got another home field advantage hit. It's going to be a home sweet home. Did I say home field advantage? I meant home sweet home. Nolan Arenado, number to 299 for the St. Louis Cardinals. That's for Antonio B. It's number to 10. Low number on that one. Usually they're to 299. But I guess that must be a red parallel. I just thought it was a team deal. But that's a good one right there. Out of 10. Nice low number card. Yeah, Paul O'Neill was a great player. He's a real gritty player. I used to like watching him back in the mid-90s with the Yankees. We got Chas McCormick. And that's it for the first box. Moving on to the second box of this round. We'll see if in this one. O'Neill traded for, by the way. He went from the Reds to the Yankees. Was it was it Deion Sanders? Was he part of that deal? Because Sanders is, and I, I, I can't remember now. Sanders, Yankees to the Reds, to the Braves. I, I can't remember now. I gotta look it up. Paul O'Neill trade. I know some of you huge Yankees fans will remember. Uh, let's check out his transactional page he had a good career not a hall of famer but definitely a great career all right here we go with this next pack he was traded for roberto kelly in 1992 roberto kelly steve z with the win i remember roberto kelly i always thought he looked weird on his cards always had a weird expression on his face there's alika williams 
Hal Morris was one of my least favorite players. I hated Hal Morris so bad. I don't know why. I just hated him. Travis has just got him from work. What's well, close to good? I just sent you a package today, by the way. One of the last packages that I shipped today. I think it was a uh, Saturday showdown. But let me check. I'll get you the updated list here. We just had another payment come in, so I'll try to keep it updated as we go along. Let's see. We're doing anger boxes next, but the round that we're doing next is all sold out. Let me see. It's loading. Brian just grabbed the Cleveland Guardians, Brian Wurgle, in Hangar Box 4. So i got to take them off the list, and I'll show you. So it looks like it's going to be between J13. Here's the teams remaining and their prices. And Hangar Round 4 with 32 boxes. There's the teams remaining and their prices. I can't really fit it on the screen because i got packs there, but... There's about nine teams left in Jumbo round 13. So that one might go tonight. We've got a numbered Aaron Judge. So the Yankees doing pretty well. Another Yankees hit. I didn't like Hal Morris and I didn't like Nick Johnson. Remember Nick Johnson from like the early 2000s? I hated that guy. I don't know why. His little mustache and his little smug face just always rubbed me the wrong way. There's Spencer Strider. The mix is at the LCS. We had a debate with Shohei being in LA and Soto being in New York City. Will we see a home run race in 2024? I'm trying to think how many home runs I feel like they're capable of doing. I think that if Otani stays healthy, he would be capable of hitting over 50 home runs. If he's healthy, because, I mean, he's freaking otherworldly. Now, he had his season cut by almost a full month last year at 44. So I think he could get 50 if he stayed healthy the whole season. Let's see, how many games did he have last year? He had 135. So he missed a good, what, 25 games last year and still at 44. And uh, let's see. he's on. He's projected this year to hit... 35. I think he's, I, I'd give him 135. I'd like to see him reach 50. Juan Soto is going to be benefited by playing in New York. It's a smaller ballpark than San Diego by a good bit. There's George Springer and Javi Baez right there. Game use bat. Timmy says, John Candelaria once told me to go F myself. <laughs> Are you serious? Adley Rushman, that's pretty crazy. The candy man, what's his deal? What did you do? Did you just ask him for an autograph? I don't think a, any player has ever said anything like that to me. I mean, there's been there's definitely been some players that have been rude. And while well, you asked for an autograph, you said go blank yourself. So the Candyman with uh, woke up on the wrong side of the bed that day, I guess. Juan Soto. I'm looking up his projected stats this year. They only project him at 28 homers. Maybe I'm just super. Optimistic, but I would. I'm going to project Shohei Otani at 48 homers, and I'm going to project Juan Soto at 41. I think Juan Soto is a little more of a line drive hitter than he used to be. He doesn't kind of lift the ball as much, especially out in San Diego the first half of last year. It seems like just hitting line drives all over the place. But I do think they both, if healthy the whole year, will hit over 40. But I think Otani probably will, will win. There's Nick Fortes. Is there going to be a guy that comes out of nowhere and just pops off this year like Matt Olson did last year? Could Vladdy, could that guy maybe be Vladdy? If you want to, here's, here we go. Marcus Semyon World Series card. And it's an autograph out of 50 for the Texas Rangers. Very nice. This one's going to go to Texas owner... Brian Jackson will get the numbered out of 50. Marcus Semyon Game Muse World Series jersey autograph right there. That's a great card. Congratulations on that. Love that kind of stuff. If you're going to pick a dark horse guy to come out of nowhere and lead the league in home runs, somebody that no one is expecting, who would you pick? 
I'll give you I'm, I'll give you a guy that just popped into my mind because he's never never healthy, but I think he could lead the league in home runs if he played a full season. And that would be Aloy Jimenez. Jimenez has a ton of power, and he just always seems to be hurt. There's Kutch. That's a great card right there. Game used jersey. Nate says Byron Buxton. Buxton does have a lot of pop. I would be, yeah, if Buxton went off for like 48 home runs or 49 home runs and led the league, I would be, I would be surprised. Is Strasburg actually going to come back and pitch? Steven Strasburg, remember he retired basically and the Nationals didn't want him to because they didn't want to, they, I think they were trying to force him out of his money. Is he is he back? I haven't heard anything about this. It says, why are the Nationals picking a fight with World Series former champion Steven Strasburg, longtime Nationals ace, will likely appear. What's going on with him? Because I last time I heard they were trying to force him to come to spring training. Nationals and Strasburg need to settle their differences. They say they want him to report to camp if only to help out the young pitchers. I don't know if he ever reported the camp or not. I, I don't see any news since February about this. Scott says he won't come to spring training. So if he's not coming to spring training, could they put him on the restricted list and not pay him? Is that? I think maybe that's kind of what they want. They signed him to a big contract, and he got hurt almost immediately. They did not get really anything out of him. He basically put it all on the line and, and uh, burned out his career for the Nationals for that World Series win. But that's interesting. They're yeah, they're not getting along, which is kind of a, a shame. All right, next one. Yeah, I remember hearing that he was planning on retiring, and I, I don't know. I thought when you retired, when you still had money left on your contract, you forfeited that. But I don't know if, if that's the case. Something's going on with those teams. Here we go with the final box of this round. Then we'll get into 32 hanger boxes. We got Eduardo Rodriguez. Steve says T3's coming up above. That's right. You said that story before. 15 years. Um, what did his auto told him? What he did? He got up and apologized and said it's that he was drinking a lot back then. Is that what we're talking about? The candy man. All right, next one up. Ken Griffey's right there. Paul Goldschmidt, former MVP, probably a future Hall of Famer. Probably needs a couple more decent years, and that'll be enough to put him over the thresholds to get him in. Usually, if you're a first baseman, you need to have around a 65-plus war, which means wins above replacement. If you look at Delton, who kind of struggled to get in, took him a while, but he got in this year. His war was 61.8. Paul Goldschmidt is currently at 61.7. So Paul Goldschmidt's right there with Todd Helton. And Goldie didn't play in Colorado, which a lot of people feel like that helped help out a lot. Although he did play in Arizona, which is also a great hitting ballpark. There's Joey Votto, Blue, Gabriel Moreno. So yeah, I think I think Goldie will get in to the Hall of Fame. 340 career home runs. Could end up with 400 plus dingers. He'll likely get in there. There's Dominguez once again. I think Joey Votto will likely get in. I don't know if either of those guys will be first ballot guys, but I think that they'll probably be in there at some point. Got Coco Montes. Both of those guys have MVPs, which is a big factor for some voters as well. All right, on to the next pack in J6. Mookie Betts is on the top. And we've got Jonathan India for those Cincinnati Reds relic. Scott says, finally watched the old wax box you opened that was moldy. You mentioned Fossey and Rose. Had to show a few buddies at work. It was a different game back then. Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, wasn't that crazy? Ray Fossey. 
basically having his career ended by Pete Rose. Pete Rose just destroyed him at plate in an all-star game, in an exhibition that didn't even matter. Evan Longoria, 58.6 wins above replacement. Yeah, does he get in? I, I never thought of Evan Longoria as a Hall of Famer. But, um, I mean, 264 career hitter is not all that great. OPS plus is another thing you look at. 119. That's not all. Uh, let's, let's, con you know, when you're looking at Hall of Famers, you got to kind of compare them to other guys that are in. Let's compare Evan Longoria to Scott Rowland. So key numbers here, Evan Longoria, 58 war, 119 OPS plus, 342 homers. Scott Rowland, 70 war, 316 homers, 122 OPS plus. So actually Longoria is not all that far off. Of Scott Rowland. Scott Rowland PS Plus is 122, which isn't all that great. 22% above average in his career at the plate. Uh, Scott Rowland was a guy. I never thought of him as a Hall of Famer. I always thought of him as a good player. But if you would have said when he retired, that's going to be a Hall of Famer, I would have been like, what? Really? Nah. McCutcheon a Hall of Famer? I would say no. There's Ellie De La Cruz. McCutcheon had some great years, but I, I think his prime wasn't long enough. What's left for J13? Let me put it on the board here a second. And Jumbo 13. Timmy Tetham says, I saw Pops. That's Willie Stargell's nickname. Come out of the Triangle Bar in Swissville. He bought a sub for lunch, got his autograph. Great guy. That's pretty awesome. Willie Stargell, one of the all-time Pittsburgh greats. Let's see here. Um, Antonio Gonzalez just picked picked up Pittsburgh in hangar box four, but they're already gone. Thomas Hope has them, so Antonio, can I take that 55 and apply it to other teams in that round? Let me know. And for J13, here's what we've got left, box four, but we've got Colorado, Detroit, Houston, Kansas City, Miami, Pittsburgh, San Diego, San Francisco, and St. Louis. So we've got about... What, five, nine teams left altogether in J13. I'm trying to think if I ever met a, a Major League Baseball player out in public somewhere. I've seen them walk into the park before just in street clothes. Sometimes I get to the ballpark real early for batting practice and be standing there and the opposing players would walk across the bridge in street clothes. My friend... He used to go for autographs real big, and he would like go up and ask him for autos, and they would always tell him to go blank himself. <laughs> At least that's what he would come back and tell me. There's a good autograph right there, Jordan Lawler. Jordan Lawler, this will be going to the Arizona Diamondbacks, which is for Steven Frisenda. Very nice. Seaball says, Roland was a player you had to see a lot to appreciate how good he was. He was one of the best base runners that I've ever seen. He definitely was good. I just never thought of him as a Hall of Famer. And DeHawk says, did you get my package? I did. Yeah, we'll be doing that on Thursday night. In our next consignment, what was numbered? The Jordan Lawler's not numbered. Nope, not numbered. To be numbered, you need the, the stars in the background to be colored in. When the stars are white, it's not numbered. Trouble with the link. Um, Dwayne, I'll give you some information here. So a couple things. The, if you're having trouble with the PayPal, here it is. You got to copy and paste that. A lot of people will misspell it. And they'll put like a C or a, a zero in there. And the spot that they're on sale right now, and I post throughout the day on, on break days. I usually post updates, usually three, sometimes four times throughout the day. That's where I have all the, uh, that was the most recent one. Now, since I posted that about an hour and a half ago, an hour ago, things have changed. Some rounds have sold out. Other teams have been picked up. So you always just got to check live like, hey, are the blanks still available? And I'll say, yeah, or, or no. Junk Wax, how's it going? There's Jordan Alvarez, game used bat for Houston. So the Astros get a hit. There's Joe Ryan. And here's our last pack in this round. Then we'll go into the hanger box round, which was a pick your team. And we're opening 32 of those. There's Max Muncy, Jordan Westberg. Let's check out the silver packs. I'm going to say one numbered zero autographs. 
Tony G wants to know what teams are still available in hanger box for. You had a $54 credit there. You can grab like a $20, a $19 team in the Houston Astros. Got Colorado, White Sox, Detroit, those are all 19. Miami's 19. Houston's 34. Minnesota's 24. Pittsburgh's gone. I just forgot to delete them. San Diego, 39. St. Louis, 39. Make sure that... Yeah, San Diego, St. Louis. Tampa Bay is still available at 34. Toronto, 24. Washington at 19. Mix is going for the same. Tony G wants Detroit and Houston. Okay, we'll take them off the list and we'll put your name on it. That's Antonio Gonzalez. Detroit and Houston. You got them. And we'll probably do those tonight because that one's filling at a rather decent clip as two more teams come off the board. Now there's less than 10 teams left in Hangar Box 4. All right, let's open those silver packs. See if we can get something else going here on our way out the door in J6. Steve's saying zeros all around. That's, man, got to do better than that. I'm saying one parallel. Just one because we already got an autograph in the last round of this, and these are from the same case. Mick says, way to go, Steve, you negative Nancy. You might be right, though. Let's see. There's Rifkin to start it off. Soto's in there. Big Mac. I'm not seeing any color yet. Oh, there's one. Gavin Williams, purple, which will be for the Guardians, number to 75. So, I'm, hey, maybe I'll be right. There's one. I said one parallel, zero autographs. And I'm wrong. It's two parallels, zero autographs. A Jordan Lawler out of 99 for the Arizona Diamondbacks right there as well. Steve says, oh, I'm happy I'm wrong. Yeah, definitely want to see parallel cards because they bring some additional value into the breaks when those pop up. So J6 is in the books. Let me put these away. And then we'll move into 32 hanger boxes. It's a pick your team round. We just called it hanger box round three until I realized that I also had a random team hanger box three, so I had to, had to add the letter B to that to differentiate between the two. So this is a pick your team hanger box round three. It's 32 boxes. Everybody's already picked their teams. This one is all sold out. The next round that we're going to do is probably either going to be, they're actually both tied, nine spots left in J3, nine spots left in hanger box four. One of those rounds will potentially go next. There's the teams that are still available if you want to grab any of those. All right, the hanger box, fresh case just opened. It's right out here outside the door. We pulled in. And we'll see what we can do. And hopefully, we'll pull some good stuff out of here. At some point, I might have to change the garbage can here too because it's getting pretty full. All right, so the teams in this hanger box round, it's sold out. We have the following people, and just to refresh your memory, I don't know if I can handle this this um, awful doll box cutter. Luke has Arizona. Donald Atkinson has Atlanta. Matt Foy has the Baltimore Orioles. Matt Durfee has the Boston Red Sox. Travis Vance has the Cubs. Chris Pepperly has the Cincinnati Reds. Brian has the Cleveland Guardians. Tobias has Colorado. William Hartley has the White Sox. Ross has the Detroit Tigers. Mick says, go get that blue box cutter. I should. I like that box cutter. It's a good box cutter. It's downstairs. Chris Bryant, numbered card for the Colorado Rockies. First hit for Tobias. We've got the yellows in there. Ellie De La Cruz, 89. Got the stars of MLB, which I'm already tired of those. That's the first time... They've even seen them tonight. Just, there's just too many of those year to year. After the Detroit Tigers. Oh, man. I might have to go get that blue box cutter after all. But after Detroit, we've got Boxer Bud with Houston, Jeffrey with Kansas City, Elijah Limbo with the Los Angeles Angels, Jeffrey has the Dodgers, Donald Atkinson has Miami, Earl has Milwaukee, Ross has Minnesota, Chris. K has the Mets, Mizzy has the Yankees, Patrick Phillips has the Oakland A's, and Dan Streelman has the Philadelphia Phillies. 
Let's see what we've got in this next one here. Gonna have a purple Chris Murphy to $7.99, Lane Thomas. Couple yellow parallels, which really always remind me of 91 Fleer for good reason. Next one up. We also have Tobias with the Pirates, Steve with the San Diego Padres, Luke with Seattle, Jeffrey with San Francisco, Box for Bud with St. Louis, Ross has Tampa Bay, William has Texas, Julia has the Blue Jays, and William Hartley has the Washington Nationals. So that is our lineup. And I might go, I don't know what ever happened to this box cutter. It's so dull. It's like somebody like, Dragged it across concrete or something. I could not, like, cut my hand if I wanted to, so I don't have to worry about any mishaps tonight. There's an Ellie De La Cruz. Nothing else in this one. Kiwi says it has opened millions of boxes. It might seem that way. Sometimes for sure. We'll do box number four with it. See, it like it doesn't even do anything. Come on. Maybe I just need to go go at it a different way. All right, next one up. I'm gonna plug my computer back in here because we'll be breaking through these hanger boxes for probably the next thirty minutes without much use of putting the computer on the screen. You can turn those blades around and reuse them another side to it I've never been very good with replacing blades let's try it see so I pulled out and uh, put it back in there well that was freaking easy all right so good call on that one let's see if that does the trick sometimes I'll try to replace the blade it'll be all loose and everything and it's just like a... well we'll see if that does it we've got Grant Hartwig Say Suzuki for the Cubs, which will be numbered to $7.99. And another, Ellie De La Cruz, $89. Top style card. Stars of LB are so annoying, says Steven. I agree, Brandon is such a teacher. All right, let's see if that improves our box cutting experience here. Oh, yeah, that's sharp. That's good. That'll be good for the next... However many months. All right, let's see what we've got in this next one. Here comes your lovely stars of MLB. It's Pete Crow Armstrong, which gets a sleeve because it's a chrome. Marco Luciano gets a sleeve for the Giants because it's a royal blue. Chris says, I have a stars of MLB Henry Davis and the chrome I got from eBay. Yeah, there is. Speaking of Henry Davis, there he is. The chrome ones, I don't mind the chromes. I feel like maybe they should just replace the Stars of MLB with just chromes. Chris has a PC now of Henry Davis. I like it. I like that collection. You beat me to it. I was thinking about starting a PC of him. Hey, Keith, how's it going? Mick says, a new box cutter trick to add to your box cutting arsenal. Just flipping the blades over. I should have marked the other one dead or something so that I know whenever I go to flip it again that it's not going to work just to save myself some time we've got Paul Seawald Royal Blue which will sleeve up there's Tyler Soderstrom still no autographs or relics Keith's been busy Keith are you anywhere near New Orleans because Sophia wants to go there and I was trying to think who could I talk to about Going to New Orleans and, um, like, I want to know, like, where to go for all the baseball cards. Best spots for baseball cards and all that stuff. Do a video or two down there. She's been talking about it. 25 minutes. I'll have to hit you up. She wants to go there sometime in the springtime. Maybe in a month or two. I hope there are some card spots down there since you guys don't have an MLB team. 
New Orleans Convention Center. I wonder if there'd be a card show down there. We should try to time it with the card show. There's Bryce Harper. Still no hits in terms of relics or autographs in any of these. Crash says, hey, I've been watching for a while. I've always wanted to be in a break. I'm glad you're watching. If you want to join a break, they're easy to join. All you have to do is have PayPal and join our Patreon. We still have spots left tonight. The hanger boxes. We might be live for another hour and a half, an hour and maybe almost two hours if we keep selling out. We still have J13. We still have hanger box four. Those are pick your team rounds. They both have nine teams left. And we also have a hobby box round too. Half hobby box, six box for that. I haven't talked much about it because there's 13 spots left. But, I mean, a few people will jump in on that. That could... Get the ball rolling. There's Evan Carter. 1991 Fleer. There's a lot of casinos down there, says the mix. Let's go down there like lose all my money on the uh, roulette wheel. Here we go with this next one. 32 boxes. Still a bunch left to go in this round. Chris says, I've played blackjack since I'm good at math. You count cards? I always wondered. I've played blackjack on my phone just to try it out, but I've never actually played, played. Brandon said, sports card show right up the road in Gettysburg, April 13th. Gettysburg Sports Show 2.0. That's a little far, I feel like. Gettysburg, I would guess, is... Almost three hours from me. I have to ask Timmy Tea Time on that. I think I, last time I was in Gettysburg, I think I was like 14 to go to the battlefield. Let me see how far Gettysburg is. Usually when I'm doing card shows, I don't like to go more than like an hour and a half away. Just because otherwise it's not, not really worth it. Let's see here. Gettysburg... From the closest town to me is two hours and 57 minutes i am right on the money three minutes off see that's a that's a six hour round trip commute plus i'm probably gonna stop for dinner so it's like that's like a full day thing and it would really have to have a bunch of cards for it to be worth it because usually when i go to a card show i might spend a couple hundred dollars maybe i'll sell some of the cards in an auction might make a hundred dollars profit on the cards if i sell a bunch of them but i don't know if that's worth it for a full day and then all the gas and everything it'd have to be a massive card show with lots and lots of cards with at great prices to make it really worth it for me there's christian walker Number to 50. The Hawk says, love the garage video. You got my package? I did. It's sitting right inside the door here. We'll be auctioning that stuff off. I'll go through it. and I think it's from you. I'll have to double check. I just saw a big box, and I just assumed it was yours. I went to the post office yesterday and today, so if it was there, they would have given it to me. I think we may have... Do we finally have a relic? Or is that just a bunch of stars of MLB card? When will you post the next March Madness option? Well, let's see. I'm probably going to film Chrome Update tomorrow and Stadium Club tomorrow. I only have one box sold in each of those. I might I might want to add a second box, so I'll put those up. And then I also have Inception that I'd like to post. I might post it tomorrow because I might film... I want to get a bunch of them filmed. Maybe not a bunch, but enough filmed so that I can auction all the cards off on Thursday night along with the Hawk stuff. Because when I do those March Madness videos, I, I kind of get stopped because I can open a box whenever, but I can't do March Madness whenever because I have to open the box and I have to sell the cards. And if I don't have an auction coming up, well, then I can't do those videos. So I think last week we missed the auction because I had an inspector coming out to look at my garage roof. And I wanted to clean up my garage a little bit. 
because he was going to go in there because there was damage to the ceiling where it was leaking. And that took me about two hours. Then I wanted to watch the uh, State of the Union address because I, uh, I'm politics interests me. And uh, I feel like a lot of people watch the State of the Union looking for gaffes and such. There's Freddie Freeman game-used jersey for the Dodgers. That's actually our first hit of this round in terms of a relic. It's going to go to Jeffrey G. Jeffrey gets that one. Kiwi says Gettysburg is, what, 8,643 miles away. That's a town you might never visit, huh? It's home to uh, one of the uh, one of the biggest battles in the Civil War. Gettysburg. There's a whole movie about it. Gettysburg with Tom Berenger and oh, what's his name? The guy from Dumb and Dumber, Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels was great in that movie as um, Colonel Chamberlain. Really great performance. It's like how how did that guy pull that job off acting? But he he was Dumb and Dumber. Our next hanger box up. I feel like you can even ask my brother on this. I feel like we went to see the movie Gettysburg like nine times in the theaters. Like we were just going all the time. And it was only playing in West Mifflin, which was far from us. We've got a gold mirror image coming up. There's Jared Triolo gold rookie card for the Pirates, which is a nice one. And Jake Rogers gold mirror image variation with some sort of like hockey face mask on. For the Detroit Tigers, so not a bad box. Gold rookie card and gold mirror image variation. That would be a good one if I was picking up that box out at Walmart. On to the next hanger box. He's TPIA, passes alive. Let's see what else we've got. I'm going to probably have him on or ask him if he wants to come on for Junk Wax Olympics at some point. What is it, 22? Are there Olympics this year? Maybe I should do that in conjunction with the actual Olympics. There's a Eugenio Suarez to 299. Have all these different Junk Wax events. All right, Steven, see you later. I think that would be nice. See if um, my kids want to participate. Junk Wax Olympics. It could be great. Could have like a... <laughs> different stupid events that should be interesting. Like card throwing. I feel like I would win in card throwing. Because I used to actually watch how card throwers would throw the cards. I feel like I, I can I can probably throw one of these 90, 90 tops cards or whatever we're using. Probably whip one of those across from 90 miles an hour. Could have like... Some sort of building competition. Could have feats of strength of some sort. Like, there's all these, like, you saw my garage video if you're a channel member. All those boxes, those 800 count boxers, boxes out there. Give, give each of us, like, 20 of those to carry. And then race across the yard towards the uh, golf course to see who can get across without dropping. The boxes. That would be interesting. Or, that's an idea I had too. Actually playing Jenga with those boxes. I have those 800 count boxes. There's so many of them out there. Just build an actual Jenga tower out of them. And we actually play Jenga with actual junk wax boxes. That would be, that would be fun. Chris says, Eric never cheated Jenga. Uh, Sophia would tell you otherwise. I got my first loss, although I didn't knock the tower over, but I was I was saddled with a loss. <sighs> it happens though. So the tower was like this. I was like I was like this, and I was I pulled out a block, and the tower started to go like that, and it touched my finger. But as soon as I I set the block down, it stabilized. But since the tower touched my finger, I was forced to take a disqualification. Yeah, I think Junk Wax Olympics would be a fun series. We could, uh, I've got a swimming pool. We could, um, 
We could have a challenge where we build boats out of like 1991 Fleer. And then they'd have to carry a, a, a pack of like 91 Fleer across the, uh, across the water. Because there's a current in the pool. All the, the current goes towards the cameras. So we could just start on one side. Just put them in there and see who gets across first without sinking. That would be another Junk Wax Olympics event. Got a bunch of ideas just thinking out loud. Braxton Garrett. And then we could just do one every day right along with the uh, Olympics, which isn't the Olympics like a two-week thing. So we could probably come up with 14 events. Ellie De La Cruz. I think that'd be fun. Pack opening contest. Loser gets thrown in the pool, says the mix. Winner gets a gold. Second gets a refractor. That would be a cool thing. I always like little mini series like that. Every now and then, like 12 Days of Troutmas was fun. The uh, March Madness was fun last year, although it did get to be a little bit, bit much last year doing it every single day. Like some days I would film like six videos in a day because I'd have to like get it all ready and auction all the cards off. That's why this year I'm just doing it a little bit here, a little bit there. Probably do it like once or twice a week in March. All right, let's see. How many boxes do we have left? There's still a ton of boxes left in this round. 32 boxes per round. Instead of an egg and spoon race, how about cards and a spoon race? Yeah. That would be true. Different dumb events that would still be interesting. One event should involve opening those crappy score wrappers. That, yeah, good old, those like little bags, plastic bags. Of like 91 score. Got Brad Keller. Darts with the cards as the board. That's true. I, I'm going to try not to ruin that many cards. I mean, some of them will probably get ruined just for fun. Because they're not worth anything anyway. But. There might be some purists out there that won't be able to handle seeing us like build something with cards or whatever. Ross says, race to see you can open archives and Gypsy Queen packs the fastest. That would be tough. Wander cards on a dartboard. Yeah, that I don't think there'd be too many objections to that. Could have Wander and Julio Rios on there. Put up a, a whole bunch of players that have been kind of like basically put on the blacklist of MLB for one reason or another. Put Felipe Vasquez up there as well. Look at that. There's a great card. Vlad Guerrero. Team border match. That's a beautiful card right there for Toronto. There's Nelvi Marte. On to the next box. Laminate cards into a skateboard blank. Maybe. I can't skateboard at all, though, so he would win. I think he would do a skateboarding, he would win. Dave says, I got a Wander Auto Redemption and sent it to Tops, and they sent me a Junior Caminero Bowman's Pest Autograph. Really? They wouldn't give you the Wander? Did they just destroy them all? Mike says, those videos would be channel member exclusives. Here's Christian Encarnacio and Strong. That's a good one. Gold rookie card. Mitch Keller to $199 on the icy red for the Pirates. Also in there. And... Let's see what else we've got. Still many more hanger boxes to come in this case. Probably at least, I don't know, 10 or more. I'm going to go ahead before I open these up, and I'm going to change this trash because it is overflowing with hanger boxes. So I'll be right back in 30 seconds.
changed, and then we'll... Hanger boxes definitely fill up the trash pretty quickly. Back when I first started doing breaks in this room, I used to have a system where I would just open all the cards and throw all the wrappers and the boxes on the floor. And then there'd be like a three foot high pile of trash. I wouldn't even be able to get out the door without some trouble. And then I'd spend a bunch of time the next day cleaning it all up and I was like, this is not efficient. So this giant garbage can here is a much needed necessity. Empty hanger box toss for distance. Hey, that's not a bad idea. We might even toss a box of something that's really, really crappy. Like, I don't know. What's a really crappy wax box? Like 90 Fleer. Sophia is a former track star. She would probably win that. She was a thrower. We've got Marco Luciano. Out of 999 on the blue for the Cubs. Toss a box of 91 Fleer. I don't have too many 91 Fleer left. I, there's some cases of 90 Fleer out in my garage. I don't know why I have those. I probably bought them for like 20 bucks back in the day. Okay, what time is it now? 11 o'clock. We'll be here till 12.30 or so. It says, since Pete Cromstrong has a star of MLB rookie, does that mean his base rookie will be in Series 2? Yeah, he'll be in Series 2. You see that also with Silver Pack rookie cards. You'll see guys like Junior Caminero in with the Series 1 Silver Pack rookies. He'll come up in the Series 2. There's Cutter Crawford and Jose Fermin. Brandon says, I'm kind of over Series 1. Love the design, but Chrome should be good. I guess if you open enough of it, you put the set together. There's two Juan Soto cards that are identical there, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of itching for something else. I, I was really hoping we'd have some new stuff to open today, but they pushed it back. This week was originally supposed to be Signature Series and Bowman Inception, and those are both pushed back to next week. So we'll get some new stuff in here. Talk says, do you think you would ever invite a channel member, a Patreon member, to do a break with you? That would be an awesome giveaway. Spend one day with Jabs. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I think we're actually going to go to New York and uh, do a like a member meetup in Syracuse, New York at some point this summer and do a break with you guys. Maybe have a guest, former MLB player, come in, just like we did with uh, Frank DePino a couple years ago. That was, that was a great time. Might do that again. Sometime this summer. Maybe like live box wars. All right, next one up. Brian says, Top should do a YouTube promo with all the top influencers. That'd be cool, like a commercial. Wouldn't that be something? Put us all into a box war. White Sox Tom says, is the bounty for your card if you pull it or if anyone pulls it? No, it'll be for me if I pull it. The bounty is just for my breaks. If somebody pulls it in, like, somebody else's break, I mean, that's nice, but I'm not going to give them $1,000 for paying into someone else's break. you got to be into my break, and I, I want I want to buy the card that I pull. So basically, whatever, whoever has that card, the first card, whenever I pull myself, I want that card. That's going to be kept forever. And that's why I'm giving a thousand dollars for it. Yeah, it's not just uh, it's not just gonna go to some Joe Schmo, who, for for all I know, could just maybe pick it up off eBay. There's only a thousand of them made, so I'm sure some will come out on the first day. I bought sixty cases, so hopefully I can find one in there. All right, we still have. It looks like. Eight boxes left in this round. Syracuse, probably because uh, I've got a I've got a friend in Syracuse that has a restaurant there that could host it. Yeah, Kiwi, 60 cases. We are talking 
well over $40,000 worth in Tops Big League that I spent. Emptied the, uh, maxed out the credit card on that. But I want to make sure that uh, I have some cases to open even years from now. Still have some cases on the shelf because, you know, go back and look for like 2018, 2019 big league cases. I don't know if you can find any. Even like 2020 big league. If you find, you might be lucky to find maybe one on eBay. Tom says, so when is the random Hangar 3 and TM from last week happening? Hangar 3 is right here. Unless you're talking about, oh, you're talking about the random one. Whenever it sells out, currently it is at 15 spots. So it might not go till next week. But we'll see. Like I said, I'm here till 12, 30, 1 o'clock. I can just keep on breaking all night. And sometimes... You might have one person like Box for Bud sold out two rounds all by himself tonight. He picked up all like all eight or whatever teams. So you never know what round is going to end up going. We still have eight boxes left in this round. I'll log into PayPal and see if anybody have another payment. Send in another payment so we can keep that up to date. Six boxes left in this round. Doc says, I can notice that you have a huge conference room and I'll order food. That's pretty cool. It's got a conference room, like a business. How many pallets of 60 cases? There's 25 cases on a pallet, at least the pallets that I bought before. So probably like two and a half. Here's the spots that are left. If you want to grab some spots, who knows? Maybe this will be the last round of the night, unless these ones go. We have J3, which is jumbos. We have nine spots left. Colorado, Detroit, Houston, KC, Miami, Pittsburgh, San Diego, San Francisco, and St. Louis. For Hangers 4, we got Colorado, Chicago, White Sox, Miami, Minnesota, San Diego, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, Toronto, and Washington. So if anybody wants to grab any of those, you can, and that will determine if, if we do another round. Whichever one sells out or gets close to going, we'll do. Box for Bud just had a good question. BWB, well, let me go back and find it. How would you decide what team your card goes for? I think what we're going to do is... All influencer cards, we will random off because I think Steve had that idea. So if you get the Yankees or whatever team, like Miami Marlins, it doesn't matter. If you're in that break that the card is pulled from, we'll put it off to the side. Then we'll go to random.org and then we will use random.org, put all your, your names in there and randomize it. I think that's the way we'll do it. Especially for like, I think that's especially for like pick your team rounds. Cause like who wants to pay like a hundred dollars a team for Oakland? Cause that's probably what they would go for. Cause since there's a thousand dollar card out there, I, I wouldn't sell Oakland for like 15 bucks, you know? So I think it'll just be random off. So if you want to grab a spot in multiple rounds, have a shot in each round, you could do that, whatever you guys want to do. But I think that I was thinking that over and it seems like we were talking that, I think we were talking about that, on Saturday night in the Saturday only Patreon only box wars. And I think that seemed to be logical. That's Jason Dominguez for the Yankees. Typically in any weirdo cards we just give to Oakland because Oakland always sucks. But I think for all like say we pull like three influencer cards, which isn't gonna happen. At most, we're going to pull one influencer card per round if we're lucky. But we'll just uh, we'll just random them off as we go along. Unless we get really lucky and pull multiple ones. Chris says, let's get J13 sold. I'm not going to spam this either. Okay, this is the Pick Your Team Hanger Box 3. This is going right now. We've got a... Royal blue card right there. That will go to the Marlins. Couldn't you randomize team with an asterisk and award that team the card? Like ahead of time? Like give it to the Pirates? I think just out of... I don't know. Like I thought about that too. Hangar 4 sells 9 teams left, Mizzy. 
I think it might, you know, give you more, more incentive to watch to see if it even comes out. And then you get to sit there and wait and see if you're going to get the thousand dollars. I think that's kind of cool. Whereas if I do it the other way and predetermine the team that gets it, if there is one, then you'd be like, oh, all right, I'm not even watching this break now. Thomas does a go as soon as they sell out. Might be an influencer hot box. That would be cool. It's got JP Sears. Room has 20 chairs. Very nice. That'd be cool. Ross says, if anyone wants to get a hot in this spot in the hangar box round four, I'll take a spot to get it going also, if needed. There we go. Alec Bohm right there. There's only two boxes left in this round of Hanger Pick Your Team 3. And then we'll see if we're doing any more. Nine spots left in the hangers and the jumbos. Maybe I'd, I'd like to continue this out so I don't want anyone to have to wait extra long. There's Jake. I might put up a poll. What should we force through? What should we, you know, even though it's a little bit short, I might have to take some teams. What should we force through? Tomorrow is What Not Wednesday. People can find the link in the description. Yep, that's in there. What Not Wednesday tomorrow. We usually do an hour and a half to two hours over there. This is the last box in this round. And then, so I'll let you pick right now. I'll put a little poll up. I'm I'm not ready to throw in the towel yet for tonight. I'd, I'm ready to, to continue breaking. It's only 11 o'clock. I said I'd be here till midnight if need be, or maybe even 1230. So which round should we force next? And yeah, I'm, I'm forced because I want to make it go. J3 jumbo boxes or J13 rather, or hangar four, 32 hangar boxes. We'll let you vote. Now I'll put the whiteboard up here too also so you can see what teams are left. And then we'll just we'll continue on here. I'm getting low on jumbo boxes. I think I only have one case left. There's Jorge Mateo. So the end of the jumbo boxes, at least the, what's in my inventory, is near. Nicholas says, can I move my spot from TM1? Yeah, we can let you do that. You want to go into the J13 round? You got to let me know where to put you at, though. So here's the teams that are left. This is J13. This is Hangar 14. There's nine teams left in each round. We'll let you continue to vote. It's pretty close. Hangar boxes are in the lead. People want to see more hangers ripped open tonight. People say hangers are bangers. That first round didn't give us any autographs. So maybe the second round will. It's now 50-50. Wow, what do we do? 50-50. Andrew says, I'll take the San Diego hanger box. All right, good. Send on over. So there's one team off. Hanger boxes are now back in the lead at 53%. Chris likes jumbos better. If we're going to force one of these to go, like I said, I'll... 
get some teams moved one way or another, and I'll take teams if need be. It's hanger boxes. This is so close. 51 to 49. 51 49. We'll leave it open for another minute. Busy says, I'll take San Diego and J13. Nicholas says, I'll take Pittsburgh for J13. All right. So teams are starting to come off the board now. Andrew D just grabbed San Diego. So we'll take them off in the hanger box round. Thank you very much, Andrew. Put you on that list. Antonio just took Tampa Bay in the hanger box round. We might do both of them at this rate. Hey, I wouldn't mind doing both of them. Like I said, I don't have much going on tonight. So let me take off Tampa Bay from the hanger box round. We've got St. Louis at 39 left. Toronto at 24. J13 just went off the board. San Diego. Mizzy took them. Thanks, Mizzy. We'll add you to that list and take San Diego out of here. San Diego gone. Box for Bud just grabbed, I think, multiple teams. Houston, Miami, and Detroit. What round was that for? He took a bunch of them. Houston. It's got to be J13 because there's no Houston in Hangar 4. So Houston, gone. Miami, gone. And Detroit. He got all of them. Let's race to the finish line here between these two. So Box for Bud. With Detroit, Miami, and Houston. J13 is taking over here. Chris is taking St. Louis in the hangar boxes. Thanks, Chris. Take them off the board here. Jumbo's pulling away, says the mix. Yeah, this poll's. Probably Jumbo's up to 55%. People want to see the Jumbo boxes. All right, so we're going to do the Jumbo boxes next. We still could do the hanger boxes. So if you just grabbed a spot or two in the hanger boxes, don't worry. I, I have no problem doing those two tonight. But hanger boxes have now pulled ahead. That's what people want to see. Uh, we got another payment. Andrew just grabbed Colorado and Miami in the hanger boxes. So I, those are going to go tonight too. Colorado and Miami. There's only four teams left there, so we're doing those also. Colorado and Miami to Andrew. And Dan Schultz just grabbed St. Louis in both rounds. Problem there, though, Dan. St. Louis is gone in hanger box round. We can give you it here. Did you want to grab a similar team like San Francisco or Pittsburgh or maybe two $20 teams? You could do that. And um, that would even that out. Hangar 4, Minnesota's gone. Dustin Peterson just took them. Thank you, Dustin. Hope I didn't miss anybody. I don't think I did. I'm double-checking. Nicholas says, I, I sent money in for Pittsburgh. All right. I didn't see it come in yet. But I'm sure it'll come in soon. Nicholas Oliver, you can have him. But I'm looking at uh, I'm looking and it didn't come in yet. Here's what I've got. Box for Bud just paid for Pittsburgh. Here's what I'm looking at, Nicholas Oliver. It's not there. I, and it just came over now. We've got see it just came in. Box for Bud beat you on that one. So Box for Bud has Pittsburgh. Thomas Hope just grabbed KC. Thank you very much. So, Nicholas, let me know. I've got 10 extra bucks there. Plus, so I've got like, what, 55 of your money. I can just refund that Pittsburgh and keep you in the Tops Mixer. Or I can give you, say, San Francisco and Colorado if you wanted to get into one tonight. Those are the last two teams left in J13. It's up to you. Just let me know because otherwise I'll take those teams. We'll run it right now. Nicholas says, okay, I'll take them. 
He's got them, Colorado and San Francisco. Nicholas Oliver, thank you very much. We're sold out. Nicholas Oliver, Nicholas Oliver with those two teams. And this one's all done. J13, we're doing that one next. All right. And Ross just sent in for the Giants. Ross, a little late there. I can give you, if you want Ross, I can give you Toronto and Washington or Toronto and the White Sox, or I can refund your money or give you credit. Just let me know what you want to do there. And we'll get J13, which is now sold out. Going next. I was... Xavier Lay was just sent in for J13 San Francisco also, but I can give you a refund there. We're also... That went quickly. I was thinking I was going to have to package some teams up and maybe do them in bulk or take some for myself. But J13 coming up next, all sold out. We just got to take care of Ross. Let us know if you want a refund or if you want to pick up one of those three remaining teams. And Xavier Leva as well. He sent in for the Giants after it was too late also. Go ahead and grab this next case. It's my last case of jumbo boxes. Ross and Xavier want refunds. All right, we'll take care of that right now for both of you guys. Give me a sec. This new case opens up. All right, let's see here. First, we'll do Xavier. Refund this payment. Issue refund. All right, Xavier, your payment is back. You got the refund there. Sorry about that. A lot, of, uh, a lot of action there all at once, all coming off the board. We had like 18 teams there just all being sold at once. Thanks, guys, for selling them, selling those out. Ross, here comes your payment back, too. Issue refund. All right, so those are taken care of. And since this is a pick-your-team round, you know what teams you have, but I'll read them off for you in case you've forgotten. Jeffrey has Arizona. Michael Caven has Atlanta and Baltimore. Joseph Welch has Boston. Chris Randall's got the Cubs again. Josh Lombard has Cincinnati. Raphael Soto has the Cleveland Guardians. Nicholas Oliver has the Rockies. John Rebel has the White Sox. Foxborough Bud has Detroit and Houston. Thomas Hope has KC. Manuel Donda has Los Angeles Angels. Josh Lombard has the Dodgers. Foxborough Bud has the Miami Marlins. Justin Fernandez has Milwaukee. Troy Gerhardt has the Minnesota Twins. Raphael Soto has the Mets. John Rebel with the Yankees. Justin Fernandez has Oakland. I'll do the rest of them here in a second. We've got a Derby Duel card right here. What is this? I, haven't, I don't think I've seen this card yet. This will go to Oakland because it's a weirdo card. Derby Duel. I guess you get to choose. If, if you pick the Derby winner, you get to go to the... What? If he wins, you win a special card. Okay, I was going to say, do you get to go to the Derby? Brandon Walter right there. Gold card. That's, that's the first time I've seen that one before. A weirdo card with no affiliation. So we always give those to Oakland because Oakland usually sucks. Mick says we pulled one of those before. Maybe last year. I don't think I pulled any of those from 2024. We got Dan Strillman with Philadelphia. Box for Bud has the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mizzy has San Diego. Michael Kevin has Seattle. Nicholas has San Francisco. Dan Schultz with St. Louis, Raphael Soto has Tampa Bay, and there's our autograph. Dontrell Willis for the Miami Marlins. That's going to go to Box War Bud. So BWB with that one. What else we got? Raphael Soto with Tampa Bay. Michael Caven has Texas. John Rebel has Toronto, and Raphael Soto has the Nats in this Pick Your Team round. Hanger Box is coming up next. Adam says Oakland resident can confirm. Oakland in the house tonight. So the autograph comes out early in this one. There's Nick Fortes. Dontra Willis has been signing a lot with 2024 products. What am I doing the next March Madness video? Probably won't be out till next Friday or this Friday because I have to do a, uh, I got to do an auction, auction all the cards off first. 
and our auctions were Thursdays, Thursdays and Sundays. So I won't, I can, I can film them now, but I won't be able to actually do the selling part of it until Thursday night. So at the earliest, the next one will be out on Friday. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna make a little more space in this 3200 count box so I can fit the hanger box round in with the jumbo box round. I think we can get that done. So just move a couple cards over, fill up these rows fully. There we go. Chris, as I heard, the A's could be moving to Las Vegas. Yeah, that's that's been talked about for a while now. We'll see what happens. There's Michael Harris relic for Atlanta. That's from Michael Caven. Got a silver foil of Abner Uribe. We pulled his autograph in the first round tonight. Nothing else in there. Earl just grabbed hanger four, four but what team? Earl, did you want the White Sox or the Nationals? You didn't put the team there. Those are both the same price. So let me know which of those two teams you want. We've got the Cincinnati Reds foil card. Hanger, 32 more hanger boxes coming up next after this round. And we've got Mike Piazza, Hall of Famer. This is going to be numbered out of 199 on the front. Tallboy says, how's EJ doing with his coin collection? It wasn't my day today, so he was with his mom today. He hasn't received the coins yet, but he will soon, and he will. I can't wait to see what he thinks of him. He's going to think it's super cool. I could see taking him to the bank and just getting rolls and rolls of pennies and having him look for wee pennies. Nice Hall of Fame relic right there for the Mets. Going to Raphael Soto. Nothing else in this pack. Spencer Strider foil card. I guess we'll sleeve that one up. Flip these around. Manfred, yeah, Rob Manfred's going to be retiring in what? Five years, something like that? Scott says he can have your collection? Wow, that's, if you don't want your wheat pennies, he will uh, he'll definitely enjoy those. He's been doing these KiwiCo's recently. I don't know if you know what those are. They're like these little kits, like engineering and craft kits. I ordered them for all the kids, and none of them were interested in them. And then I tried to cancel, and they made it like almost impossible to cancel that crap. So I just kept getting KiwiCo's every single month. They were piling up. The, actually, the, uh, the downstairs water closet where the hot water tank is is filled with these boxes. And now he's been going down there like every day and taking one out and doing it up in his room. So I'm glad they're finally getting used. But I eventually was able to cancel cancel three of them, but it will not let me cancel one of them for some reason. All right, next box up. Dontrell Willis was the first autograph. Let's see who the next autograph might be. Jose Soriano starts this next one off. Got Garrett Cole and the Padres out of two ninety nine on the icy orange. Is next. Oh, this is a great card. Ronald Acuna Jr. Red numbered to twenty five for the Atlanta Braves. That's going to Michael Caven. Great card. We actually auctioned this one off. Very similar to that, except it was out of fifty. It was from the March Madness video, actually, from a few days ago. I, I think I filmed that Sunday. We auctioned the card Sunday night, so that was from a couple days ago. But that was a nice one. I think it ended up selling for like 20-some bucks. Earl wants the White Sox. All right, White Sox are gone. So in the hangar round, which is coming up next, we've got two teams left currently. And it's just the Nationals 
at 19 or the Toronto Blue Jays at 24. Those are the only teams left. If nobody wants them, then maybe I'll take them. Or maybe we'll just leave them open. There's a nice auto. Unfortunately, got popped for PEDs. Nelvi Marte for the Cincinnati Reds. Josh Linebarger is going to get that one. It's not numbered. The baseball, the actual stars have to be filled in for it to be numbered. Got a Dodgers foil card there. There's the rest of those base cards. Moving on to the next one here. We've got Yandy Diaz Gold. J.J. Bladé Silver Foil. There's Adley Rushman. Ellie De La Cruz. Baseball Card Maniac says, how's everybody doing in here tonight? Hope everyone out there is doing fine. Staying healthy. Finally, pretty much over my cold that plagued me for a good seven days or so last week. Took long enough. Nice weather. I went for a walk tonight over on the golf course. Corbin Carroll numbered the 76 Independence Day. Nice card right there. Going to the Diamondbacks, that one is for Jeffrey G. So, Rookie Gold Cup, Corbin Carroll. Those are tough to pull, those Independence Day cards. We rarely see those ever. Thanks, Travis. Yeah, voice is pretty much back to normal. It was pretty rough there for a while. Bryce Elder is up next. It's a gold foil. Aaron Judge, 89. Can't wait till the new release machine gets fired up again. We start getting some new releases. And it is going to get fired up. Not this week, but next week. It's going to be Archive Signature Series, then Bowman Inception, then Prison Draft Picks, then Big League. Or Extradition, not Prison Draft Picks. Elite Extradition. I've got one case of those coming. And then Heritage on April 10th. Baseball. Hey, maybe they're just waiting for the baseball season to start, which it starts right near the end of this month. Home Run Challenge Freddie Freeman card right there. There's Joey Weimer. Yeah, that's true. If stuff doesn't get pushed back again, that, that's always frustrating. I'm like, all right, I'm all excited for the signature series. And I didn't even know it was pushed until this afternoon. I texted my case guys. And I was like, hey, can I come pick up the uh, signature series? He's like, oh, it's pushed back a week. It's like, crap. But he did um, he did um, take my order for Tribute and Dynasty. Dynasty is $1,000 a box. It's crazy stuff. Every card in there, there's one card per box. It's numbered to 10. There's usually some massive hits per case. So I bought one case of those. And then I bought, I think, four cases of Tribute from him. Tribute is, I think it's like $550 box on Blowout cards. It's It was $500 pre-sale on Top's website when it dropped. There's Jose Ramirez, game-used bat for the Cleveland Guardians. Going out to Rafael Soto. Nico Horner, Cubs. Silver foil in there. One more box to check out. If we pull one of you cards, would you autograph it for us? Yeah, I'll, I'll autograph it. I don't know how I want to sign it, though, yet. I'm trying to think, should I sign it my regular auto? Or should I do it, um, I'm trying to think, like, do I just sign it Jab's family? Like, Jab's family like this or something like that. And then maybe write, like, one. what I got, 152K on it. Or do I actually like write my actual name? I don't know. I don't know what to do. My actual government signature. Or write Jab's family. Inscribe it. Hey, everybody, says Bernard May. I should. All right, here we go with this next one. Austin Wells. Nice young catcher with the Yankees going to John Roble. Geraldo Perdomo in there as well. 
Big says, my dad and I opened up Alan Gitter, got an Adam Wainwright framed patch. Very nice. I wonder if Wainwright's going to be a Hall of Famer. He really was awful last year. Did, did anyone even bother, bother to look at his stats? For a while, he was carrying like an 8 ERA throughout the season. He ended up with a 740 earned run average. Had a negative 2 wins above replacement meaning he was basically like as effective as maybe like a double a average pitcher that's awful so i mean he did get to 200 wins which is a nice milestone but was it worth it i don't know if he hurt his chances of getting into the hall i kind of felt like he was kind of n not gonna get in anyway probably i kind of felt last year before the season started he probably needed a few more years to get in. Felt like he was kind of like, there's some kind of like fringe-ish fringe -ish Hall of Famers like Mike Mussina, Jack Morris, guys that have a little bit higher ERAs that are in the Hall of Fame. Maybe not as many wins. They don't have that magical 300. There's Christian Encarnacion Strand. And I, I don't think he's, I think he fell short of that. Has he officially retired yet? Trev says he's not getting in. It's over. Yeah. Now, if he could have pitched like he did, like the year before, like he like when he was thirty nine, he was seventeen and seven with a three oh five. Even at forty, he was had a three seventy one ERA. But he just went completely the opposite direction. Without Yachty behind the dish, he looked lost all last year. Big reason why the Cardinals were a last place team. One of their ace pitchers was. Literally, they probably could have picked somebody up off their double A rotation and put them out there, and they would have had similar numbers. A 740 ERA is atrocious. This Paul Goldschmidt, game used bat. Mark Vientos, I think he's actually Vientos is slated as the DH for the Mets. How does that make you feel if you're a Mets fan? Is it going to be another third place, fourth place finish for the Mets? It might be. Dean Kramer and Matt Olson right there. The Matt Olson is number 499. 54 home runs for Matt Olson last year in his career year. Making the Braves look smart. They were able to let Freddie Freeman walk in free agency and then they just replace him with Matt Olson. Matt Olson has been a very capable replacement. They did not miss a beat. Scott says Hall requirements have changed. You rarely see 162 games played. It's all now all about popularity. There's Salvador Perez. We've got Ryan Mountcastle, game use bat. That goes to Baltimore. Michael Caven gets that one. Jared Triola, gold foil. Yeah, it is it is uh, all popularity game. <coughs> I wonder if we'll ever see I don't think did somebody say that if you get less than five percent on the ballot the first time, you're never eligible for a veterans committee. I think somebody said that, which means Lou Whitaker will never be able to be in the Hall of Fame, which is crazy. Got Nelly Marte right there. How did Lou Whitaker with like a 70 war not even get 5% of the ballot back when he first went on in 2001? I don't know. I don't know if they can somehow try to fix a past wrong. Maybe like have like a special one year you come back on. Is that just the rider's ballot? I know if you, if you get less than 5% on the rider's ballot, you're automatically off. Somebody was trying to tell me though, if you don't get 5% your first year, you're not even eligible for a veterans committee down the road. Yeah, guys like Carlos Delgado fell off right away somehow. Same, same deal with Lou Whitaker. Yeah, Trammell and Lou had almost identical stats. It doesn't make sense. Connor Wong right there. Silver foil. One more pack in this round, then we'll do more hanger boxes. For the hangers, if you're interested in getting into that round, there's still two teams left available. It's Toronto and Washington. If anybody wants those.
check out what we have here. Washington's 19 and Toronto's 24. This good. All righty, J13 is in the books. Let's check out the silver packs that come along with it. See if there's anything of note in there. I'm going to guess. Barnaby says, I'll take Washington. All right, Scott, you can send over. And it's yours. Now it's just Toronto left in the hanger boxes if anybody wants them. Mick says one parallel, one auto. I'm going to say two parallels, zero autos. And this is, I'll take Toronto. All right, good. Send in. So we're sold out from the hangers. We'll be doing those next. 32 hanger boxes. Scott has paid for the Nats. Thank you very much. Lady of the Cruz will get that one sleeved up. Junior Caminero is a good one. We'll sleeve that one up. He doesn't get a lot of attention for whatever reason. He was getting a lot of attention feel like maybe in the summer of last year with 2023 Bowman kind of emerging as the new face as that best guy in flagship Bowman last year when Drew Jones kind of really kind of sucked and could not get things going. Caminero kind of really stepped up. All right, so now it's time for hanger boxes. This was a pick your team round. It's 32 boxes. It's all sold out now. Hanger box, round four. I'll call out the teams as we go along. At the beginning again, since it's, your, it's a pick your team round. So let's see, Scott Donnelly and Andrew. So we have Luke with the Arizona Diamondbacks in this next round. We've got Donald Atkinson with the Atlanta Braves. Raphael Soto has the Baltimore Orioles. Matt Durfee has Boston. A S L K D H A J S H D 1 2 has the Cubs. It's a whole bunch of letters. I think he may have changed his name to Davies Wavy's cards after that. Chris has the Cincinnati Reds. Brian Wargle has Cleveland. Andrew has Colorado. Earl has the White Sox. Check this box out and then we'll get back to reading them off. I'm hopeful we can find at least one autograph in this round. There's Seth Brown. Also, there's a Mets gold. Here's out of 50, Jan Rojas, Mother's Day pink. Going to Philadelphia, Dan Streelman with the rookie right there. Very nice. Bernard May says, finally saw the Grides Tour video. That's a lot of cards. Everything of liquidating. I don't know what to do there. I feel like there's a lot of, I feel like there's some good money there. I don't, like, I don't think they're like all that valuable, but if you sit down and you really take the time to go through them all and... You make lots out of the Hall of Famers and stuff like that. I think there could be some some value in those cards. There's just no time for me to sit down and sort through everything. So I don't know what to do if I should just liquidate. I, I sold 300,000 of them. It literally was an entire car load. I had to put, the, I have three rows of seats. I had to put two rows of seats down and I filled up my car with cards. From the back of my driver's seat the whole way to the back. And I felt guilty after I did it. I was like, man, I sold all these freaking cards for like 300 bucks. Like 300,000 cards. I was like, I probably just gave away like $2,000 worth of cards at least. But I did clear some room. There's Geraldo Perdomo Gold, Adley Rushman. Chrome, Kodai Senga, Royal Blue. Still looking for a first autograph in a hanger box tonight. It has not happened yet. I don't know if you feel like continuing this one out, by the way. There's still, we still have hobby boxes. There's a hobby box around with 13 spots left. It's a half case of six. I think that's the only other one that is close to going. Otherwise, we'll move that to next week. And I'll be sorting out all of these cards over the next few days. Jacob Amaya right there. Don Mattingly. What's the cost? I think it, 
I think it's 42 on the Hobby Box. 42.99 is the live price, something like that. It's on Patreon. Dominguez is in there. We'll sleeve that one. Barmby will take two hobby spots. That would be 11 spots left. We might be doing that one too. Which means we'll, we'll be finishing up a lot of the, uh, wrapping up the ends of a lot of 2024 Tops breaks. I think almost all of them. Except for maybe the blaster round. There's Dominguez right there. Scott says do a 63 Tops. Man, I'd love to imagine that being in a break of 63. That'd be a great break. Pete Rose rookie card. Maybe a 63 set break. We could do that. Those set breaks are always fun. I have a 53 partial set that I bought like three years ago. Yeah, Barbie, you can pay now. We'll see if other people want to join you. There's a, there's 11 spots left in the hobby box round if anybody wants to get in there. I've got a partial set of 53s. But I've never sat down, had time to sit down and go through and finish it off. Once I do finish it off, that'd be a fun team break Tuesday or um, throwback Thursday. Some great cards in 53. Scott has paid for the hobby round too. Thanks, Scott. All right, let's go over and take a look at how that one's doing. It's a random team. You'll be at spots 18 and 19. So that's a lot of spots left there. That one might go tonight. We'll see if other folks want to hop in there with you, Scott, and do the Hobby Box round. There's LED La Cruz. Ronald Acuna is numbered to $9.99. The link to a spot, we just have them on Patreon. And basically all you do is you just pay with PayPal and put what you want in your payment. It's really simple. So if you let, take a look at like Scott, for example, just grab two hobby box spots. Usually people will put a little note there. Like Andrew said he wanted Toronto from the uh, hanger box round that we're doing right now. Scott would have put typically like hobby box round two two spots then I just add it right to the list still no autographs yet in this case we've opened maybe 40 boxes total between the two rounds Tyler Soderstrom Chrome Cole Reagan's Royal Blue Marco Luciano 89 Henry Davis Stars MLB Does it matter which membership? There's there's different perks for Patreon and there's different perks for channel members. For the breaks, we sell all of our breaks on Patreon. Also, if you go on a little bit of a higher tier, we send monthly packages there. And we also have a weekly live stream on saturday nights on patreon it's the saturday showdown so you can only see that if you're on patreon and then we have different ones for channel members which is what you get become a channel member by hitting the join button or we also have look, there's a miggy out of 299 we have channel member mondays special videos that you can only see if you're a channel member we started that a month ago we've done four of those the last one was a tour of my garage and we also have typically two auctions per week on Sundays and Thursdays. And usually the last 30 minutes to an hour is channel member only time where we lock everybody out except for channel members. And then, so there's there's no definitely no trolls and a little less competition for bidding. And then if you do win during that time, we give you a free hobby pack. And hobby packs are $5 by themselves, which, I mean, you just win one thing, and that pays for your membership, because I think the memberships are $4.99. 
There's Kutch. And Acuna. Jason Dominguez will sleeve him. Let's see what else we have in this next one. Still no autographs. We had, what, one or two relics from the hangers? A couple relics here and there, but... Man, the autographs from hangers are not existent tonight. The hobby box round is picking up some steam. So, Scott, you got the ball rolling there. This is a nice JT Real Muto. Team border match. So, I think we're going to do the hobby box as well. Hobby, it's called HOB2 on your break master schedule if you're following along with that. Let me update it and tell you how many spots are left. Let's see. Um, Earl Rowe took one. So, thank you, Earl. And Josh Cliff just took two. So now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spots left in that hobby box half caser. If you want to participate over there. Jason Powell just signed up as a Patreon member. Jason, thank you very much. We'll get that $26 Patreon package sent out to you soon. I sent, I think I sent all those out actually today and yesterday for the month. So I'll get, uh, I'll get the people that signed up between then and now out in the mail over the next week or two. Definitely by the end of the month. Still plenty of boxes to open up here. From the hangers. This will be the first year that I don't have like 10 hanger cases just sitting around. It's happened every year. I don't know why I order so many hanger cases and then just don't do anything with them. I think I have maybe three or four cases from 2023 Series 1. I had like five or six cases of 2022 Series 1. There's a hit. Say a Suzuki out of 50 for the Chicago Cubs. So this one is going to go in Hangar 4 to ASLKDHAJSHD12. So I, is that Davies Wavies? Are you in the chat and can just let me know? I think you may have updated your PayPal name. I have to type in whatever's on PayPal, otherwise I'll never be able to find your shipping address when I get to ship it. Brandon Walter on the back. Oh, here we go. Finally, we have an autograph. It's going to be a Blue Jays rookie auto. So how about that? Andrew D., you bought the last team in the break, and you got the only autograph in the break so far. You want to know Vieta right there? Barnaby says, this man never sleeps. My cards were shipped the next morning, and he's on the East Coast. After this breaks over, I'm going to be probably sorting cards out tonight. So, yep, we'll be... I don't think I'm going to get them shipped the next morning. The uh, the auctions are a little easier for me to ship the next day because I don't have to sort those. I usually just put them with some top loaders around them, wrap up in cardboard, and then put them in bubble mail, and I can get those out rather quickly. But these team breaks usually take me at least a few days to get done. My goal is to have these in the mail by Friday if possible. This week, get him out before the weekend. There's Ronnie Mauricio. Barnaby says, we saw the pallets of boxes out in your garage. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? A lot of shipping supplies. One of these days, I'll be able to park my car in my garage again. There's Jason Dominguez. I feel like I need to do it. I feel like I'm up against the clock because golf balls are always raining down in the vicinity. And I've been lucky enough to have one not hit my car yet, but... Sophia's car, which used to be my old car, but I got it fixed up and gave it to her. It had its windshield shattered, I think, last summer by a golf ball. Sitting out there. Let's 
some butthead hit it with a golf ball and shattered the windshield. Didn't even bother to leave a note. It wasn't shattered. It was like split, big split across the windshield from where it hit. And you could see a perfectly circular golf ball size impact zone. There's Yanier Cano Blue. Matt just sent in for Hobby 2. All right, we'll just keep on breaking tonight. I'll get you added to the list. I'd have to move my 69 Corvette from that happening. Yeah, I would uh, I'd definitely be parking in the garage no matter what. Just run my cards over and get them out of the way. I always have this, like, idea. There's Ronald Acuna Jr. I have a giant empty space. That's a nice relic right there above my garage. I have a three-car garage, and there's an unfinished attic up there. That would be so nice for storage. If I could put a floor down up there, get a set of pull-down stairs. I could even maybe make that into a nice, big, giant Patreon room. Although there's no, I don't think there's there's any heat. There's no heat out there. Have to, but that'll be a, a cool project. That's got like cathedral ceilings. It would be great. But there's no floor, so anytime I have to go in there, I've gone in there a couple times for various reasons, like investigate investigate leaks or if there's like once a bird in the attic, stuff like that. And uh, it's always super creepy up there. You could like step on these little like two by fours. How many spots left in the hangers? Um, the random hangers, that one has 15 spots left, I think. Yeah, that's 15. I don't know if we'll get that one done tonight, but the hobby one's looking promising. Six hobby boxes. Get that Willie Adame sleeved up. Was it Larry Bird? I, no, it was just a random bird. I don't even know how it got it. I think there's a little piece of siding ripped off the side of my house. I think it may have warped its way in through there. Hobby's random. Barnaby, the hobby round coming up after this, it's all random. So you'll just get assigned a team by randomizer here in a little bit after we finish off all these hanger boxes, which I would say there is probably about 16 left. Probably about halfway through this round. So we're getting there. We got some more payments that have come in for the hobbies. Let me go ahead and put them in. Chris Balistrini, add him to the master list. Jason Powell and Matt Koziel. So there's five spots left in that hobby one. Chris, is there's a commercial where Larry Bird has a guy as a bird in his house. Larry Bird, one of the best basketball players ever. Hey, Mike Trout, home for advantage. It's been a while since we've hit this card, but finally comes back. That's a good card right there. Going to the Los Angeles Angels. I feel I've hit probably pulled that card honestly like five times at least. The Angels were picked up by Eric Groffel. So Eric, congratulations on that one. They chose Mike Trout over Shohei Otani. I guess that's good since Otani's no longer on the Angels, but they pick basically the best player on each team to put on those home field advantage cards. I'm guessing Otani will be the Dodgers representative, maybe in Series 2. I also think that Otani should be the cover boy of Series 2 when that comes out in June. Have a nice bluish box with Otani on there. I think that would be a very, very good box to do. There's Ellie. Hey, there we go. Ellie De La Cruz. Blue foil for the Cincinnati Reds. That is for Chris Paparelli. Great card right there. Number to $9.99. So congratulations on that one. That's what you like to see. That's the best card of 
this case, I would say, even more so than the autograph, getting an Ellie De La Cruz numbered rookie card. That's what you want to find. Scott Hill likes it. Here we go with this next one up. What is there, 59 cards in a box now? There used to be, I was looking at 2018 hanger boxes on my shelves downstairs. There used to be 72 cards in a hanger box. And now it's, I think it's 50, 50 something. Let's check. 59 cards, yep, 59. Pretty soon, you'll have as many cards in a hanger box as you used to have in a fat pack 10 years ago. Like 50-ish cards. I know that the jumbo packs used to have 50 cards per pack back in like 2016 or so. I don't know what the fat packs had back then. Maybe a couple less. There's Corey Seager, Adley Rushman, Blue, Seth Lugo, Blue. Both not numbered. And going on to our next box. Mickey Moniac's on the back. Ken Griffey Jr. is there. There's Jake Cronenworth. Curtis Mead, 89. Chris says, should I top load all my Ryan Sandberg cards? I mean, if that's something that you would typically do for your PC, then yeah. You can care for your cards any way you want. Your base Sandberg cards, especially the modern ones, probably aren't worth all that much. They're probably, like, honestly, like a quarter or ten cents a piece. Like, if you're looking at, like, I don't know, like 20, 20, I don't get to Ryan Sandberg card, like, that's not really worth anything. But if you've got some Sandberg cards from the early 80s, you've got his rookie cards, some nice second-year cards, autographs, I would, I would top load all those. If that's the way you like to display your cards, then display your cards in top loaders. When I used to do PCs, I would put them in binders. Boxer Bud says, is there three spots for Hobby left? It's something like that. Let me check it out. Here's Kutch. Watch this upside down. Blue border. I think it's three to five. That Hobby Box round is coming up quick. Let's see. There's only eight boxes left to go. There is currently five spots left in Hobby. If you want to grab some spots, there's five spots left. Chris doesn't like the binders. Yeah, I mean, to each their own. I hate jewel cases. Those things drive me nuts. All righty, here we go with this next one. Only seven boxes left, and we're only five spots away from selling out the hobby round. Next, there's Tatis. And box for Bud. Buyout Bud. Just bought them all. Thanks, box for Bud. Got all the rest. We're sold out of hobby. We're doing those next. Let me get his name put in there five times. BWB times five. All right, hobby round two coming up in just six boxes after this one. It's a random team, so you'll figure out what team you have here in a second. This says, way to go, box four, buy out bud. Thanks. Let's see what else we've got in here. We've got Griffey. We've got O'Neill Cruz foil. I'll be busy working on these tomorrow be taking a break and my daughter has a has a recorder show she's going to be performing on the recorder i can't miss that
Yeah, I hated screw downs. Those were the worst. Screw down loaders. Man, I hated those things so bad. We've got a gold card. It's Wilmer Flores, number to 2024. Bryson Stott. There's Ellie De La Cruz, which we'll throw in a sleeve. And now just five boxes left in this round. We've opened a bunch of jumbo. We've opened a bunch of hangers. And now we're going to open hobby boxes. It's been all Series 1 tonight. I did add a whole bunch of mixer rounds, but none of those were sold out. We'll give those some more time. Maybe we'll get those a couple of those going off next week. Brendan Rodgers, blue. What's left, Raphael? I don't know if anything else is going to go tonight. We've got the Hobby Box round, which just sold out. And I think the next closest one to going is Hanger Boxes, but there's still 15 spots left in the random Hanger Box round. Here's the last four boxes of this case to wrap up this round. Toss this case down in the basement. Got rejected by the door. Almost made it down the stairs. So there's like there's like these French doors here, and then there's a, a hallway, and then there's an open door to the basement. And I was trying to throw it downstairs. So that's what I do with empty cases. I just toss them downstairs. And then once once trash day comes, I'll break them all down and take them out. Just to get them out of the way. So they can move around in here. All right, C.J. Abrams. We've got three boxes left. Ellie De La Cruz. He had just one auto out of 64 boxes has been the output. The Blue Jays auto. So if you're you know, buying 2024 tops, you might just want to go for Hobby or Jumbo. Ross swears by Hobby, says they're really good for autos. Right, we're going to open six. We'll see how we do. With the six coming up here in the next sold out round. Got Riley Green right there. Here's Kyle Finnegan numbered to 7099. Seaball says hangers are no longer bangers. They've lost their luster a little bit. There's still numbered cards coming out here and there, but there's no hits. All things considered in these, very few hits to be found. Here's the last box from the hanger round. Let's see what we can do here. I've still yet to find a superfractor or printing plate in any 2024 tops. Look at this. Ellie De La Cruz, gold foils, not too bad at all. We've got Dean Kramer right there, which is going to be to 2024, Yuri Perez. So some parallels in that box. Scott says, sorry for rambling, but I really enjoy these breaks, even your older ones. Just something about them that brings back a piece of childhood one card at a time. Wouldn't that have been cool if we could have, if, if YouTube would have been around and we could have been watching cards open back in the day? That would have been something. I know I would have been tuning in. Especially when the hobby really was exploding in like the mid '90s, that's when all the different releases came out. I think eventually, like like 1988, you get you probably get tired of the breaks after a while because it's all the same cards over and over again, no variation, no real chasers to go after. But with the, all those inserts, insert craze of the '90s, that would have been fun to watch breaks of those and just uh, I guess just being able to watch baseball and. Being like we talk baseball here, baseball talk laced in throughout the breaks. All right, the hangers are, are done, and we're now going to move into hobby. It's a half hobby case, 
six boxes. Let me pull those out, and then we'll randomize the teams. And we'll see what we can do here. There's four. Five. Six. Yep, there's six there. Another empty case to try to throw down the stairs. Let's see if I can make it. That one made it down the stairs. Very nice. All right, so let me get to random.org, and we'll give you all your teams. Go back. Pull a new list randomizer. And then here is the hobby round right here. Hobby 2. You can see it's all sold out. We're going to take this list. We're going to copy that list. We're going to paste the list over here. Then we're going to mix them up and then put them up against a template and see what team you all got. Scott will have the Arizona Diamondbacks, and Antonio will have the Washington Nationals. So the first and last. All right. Here's what it ends up looking like. These boxes now are in my way. Move those out of here. All right, now we can fit this in. So Scott has the Arizona Diamondbacks, and then Box Robot has the... Atlanta Braves, and also the Baltimore Orioles. Christopher has the Boston Red Sox. And then we've got Jason with the Chicago Cubs. John P. Grave has the Cincinnati Reds. Box Bud with Cleveland. Josh has Colorado. Matt Kozale has the White Sox. Perceived Power Sports has Detroit. David Nutson has Houston. Samuel Perry has Kansas City. Earl Rowe has the Angels. Brian Jackson has the Dodgers. Chance Davidson has Miami. Sierra Colvard has the Milwaukee Brewers. Jason Rubenstein has the Minnesota Twins. And Scott Donnelly has the Mets. Perceived Power Sports has the Yankees. Ralph Newman has Oakland. Travis Vance has Philadelphia. Earl Rowe has Pittsburgh. San Diego goes to Box War Bud. Chris Ballestrini has Seattle. And I see Leaky ASP has signed up as new Patreon member. Leaky, thank you very, very much. Zach Manzanares has San Francisco. Robert McGill has St. Louis. Cars are us. By the way, Cars are us. Two packages came back from you. Something wrong with your address? Like the big box came back along with another package. So we got send me one cent with your actual address on there so we can get it fixed up. Box War Bud has Texas. Josh Cliff has Toronto. And Antonio has Washington. All right, time for the hobby round. Let's see what we can do here. Six boxes. It's a half case. Here we go. How many autographs out of these five boxes are we going to find? Typically, I would guess out of hobby, I'm probably going to guess something like two. But I hope it's more. I would hope it's going to be at least three. But I think if I was betting on it, I'd say two autos. Two autos, four relics. Let's see what we can do. For the folks in this hobby box round, Scott's going to guess one auto. Wow, that's that's pessimistic. Ross is saying three. I, I'm, I'm going to go two. Let's see what happens. It'd be nice if it gave us four. Five, wouldn't that be a hot case? Five autos. Coach Curtis says four. White Sox says three. Man, everyone has their opinions. Let's put a poll up on this real quick. I know it's midnight and everything, but there's still a few people awake. Here's a quick little poll for you. Let me make it right now. Start a poll. How many autos from these six boxes? I'm not going to put zero as an option. I'm going to put one, two, three, or four. Let's see what everyone thinks. Polls up right now. You can click on it. Alrighty, here we go with all these base cards. There's usually one or two numbered cards mixed in. Here's the first one. It's Cade Marlowe Gold, which is numbered to 2024, of course. No autograph or relic yet. Have this other little stack here, Shea Langoliers, who was the most pulled autograph of 2023 on the channel. He's in there. By the way, the Pops report came in. I gotta find it now. It's around here somewhere. 
Can't lose that for February. Daniel Vogelback. Silver foil. Most people are kind of on my side with two autos. 35% of the votes are saying two. Three's not all that far behind. I think three's a little a little too optimistic. You haven't found any yet. The hit will be coming from this side of the box, though, here. All right, let's see what we've got. Is it going to be our first autograph? No, it's going to be a relic. Joey Votto, game used bat. So those, man, three was in the lead. Do you still think three with the autograph not coming out of the first box? I don't know. So the Cincinnati Reds get the Joey Votto hit. That would be, see, this would be kind of a rough box. Tyler Wells for March Madness. Like, what? what's the return on a box like this? Maybe, maybe I could squeeze 30 bucks out of a box like this. That'd be like a $60 loss. I don't know, the base cards might sell for 15 bucks. The inserts, if I put them all together, might sell for 20 if I'm lucky. The Joey Votto might get five to ten. I don't know. I don't. I think this would be a loser. This box right here. Now the silver pack would be the saving grace. The silver pack is what saved us on March Madness episode one. Pulled a really big Jason Dominguez autograph out of there, which saved the day. Actually put us over the top and in the green. And man, people are super optimistic on autographs. 40% think that half of these boxes are going to have autos now. All right. Super optimistic despite being 0 for 1. So that means 3 out of 5 boxes, 60% of these boxes have to have an autograph if you're going to be right. If the general consensus is going to be right. I'm still sticking with my 2. I think 2 is, is a good, fair number. I think Ross said the average box... Was, Gives you a 44% chance, and with two, that's, what's that, Th one out of three boxes, that's a 33% hit rate. All right, here we go with this next stack. We'll flip them over and see what we've got. I already see a blue LED La Cruz. It's not numbered, but that's cool. We'll get that one sleeved up for the Reds. They're having a good break so far. Stone Garrett Gold is in there as well. Another LED La Cruz. Base. Something's upside down here. What is it? Chris Murphy. It's a rainbow foil. Almost unnecessary to put that upside down, but they want it to feel like a hit, I guess. Timmy says, the only reason I did one because I couldn't do zero. You, you think it's it could have been zero. Wow. I should have put zero or one as an option. If there's zero autographs out of this, then hobby boxes officially suck. But I feel like the first round of hobby boxes I did was kind of bad with not a lot of autos. And then next case I did, there was a bunch of autos coming out of it. Let's see what we can do with this side of the stack in box number two. The hit will be coming out. Dez was thinking the same thing, zero autos. You guys are, you know, you guys have a chance of zero autos. Hey, Joe, how's it going? If we get zero autos, then, man, I don't think we'll ever do a hobby round again. This, I think this is the last hobby round that I have listed. And I probably won't add it anymore. At least for 2024 Series 1. When Series 2 comes out, we'll add one. Uh-oh, it's another relic. It's... Kyle Tucker numbered to 199, and somebody just changed their vote. It went from 40% to 39% for three autos. Now they're starting to hedge their bets a little bit. That one goes to Houston, though, so Houston gets their hit. And we'll see if there's anything else of note in the rest of these.
I'm not seeing much. Luis Arise, insert card. Upside down, Nick Senzel. I think, didn't uh, Nick Senzel, where did he end up at? Didn't the Reds part ways with him? Nick Senzel. The Nationals. All right. We'll see how he does with the Nationals. Uh, he wasn't that good in Cincinnati. He was a, kind of a highly touted prospect. But his career wins above replacement is negative. Negative 1.8 for his career. So he just has not been able to really get anything going. His career OPS plus is 77, meaning he's 23% worse than an average batter. We'll see if he can figure it out in Washington. He's, I mean, he should... He's he's 29 years old, so I mean it's he's supposed to be in his prime right now. He had a decent rookie year, 12 home runs, 256, and has not been able to really come close to that. I guess he had 13 home runs this past year with the low average. Senzel was one of those like B level. Pro Remember 2019? Senzel was one of those. Year two level rookies right behind like the Pete Alonso's and Vlad Guerrero's and Aloy Jimenez's. Everyone was all crazy about. I think Senzel was like the next class right down from them with like Keston Hira. Both those guys ended up being not all that good. All right, here we go. Still zero autographs. Let me look back at this poll and see. Oh, man, it's really coming down now. I think I, I should close the poll down because people are changing their bets. I'm going to end the poll. 35% of you officially said three autos. we got to lock you into that now. Senzel's an adequate triple-A player. Yeah, there's a lot of players that are triple-A all-stars. It's Brandon Walter. Number to four ninety nine, like Joe Adele is another one. He tears up triple A pitching. He's a beast, but just uh, has he's another guy. That's, he's been up now parts of like three seasons and has not been able to figure it out at the big league level. This is box number three. Still looking for our first autograph. Nothing has happened yet. Seems like the auto is always in the second stack somewhere. Let's check this one out. White Sox Tom says, I am done collecting Eloy Jimenez cards. You giving up on him? He could be a, he could be a home run leader one of these days if he stays healthy. That's the thing. He just always gets hurt. When he first came up, I, I thought with that size and strength and that power, I thought he would be like a perennial 35 to 40 home run bat, but he just, he can never stay healthy. Eli Jimenez, what's the most amount of games he's ever played in a season? He's been up now like four or five years. He only had 18 home runs last year, which was the uh, second most games he's ever played. Only 18 home runs. I'm, I'm not impressed. 31 home runs his rookie year in 122 games. So I'm like, oh, this guy's 35, 40 home runs all day. At 22, he's hitting 31 home runs. And that's not happening, it looks like. I don't know. Jimenez, what's going on? Let's check out this next stack and see if we can hit that first autograph. We might hit a blue, yeah. We might hit a, 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 a an autograph in a blue silver pack. But there we go. Dalton Varsha, we've got one. So the Blue Jays have had some good luck with autographs tonight. There's another Blue Jay hit. This one's going to go to Josh Cliff. So there's one auto. I called two. A lot of you called three. Nice to see an autograph come out so that we're not going to get skunked with nothing. Scott says, it takes a season for managers to figure out rookies like Ellie. Well, they figured out Ellie De La Cruz relatively quickly. It took him like a month or two. He was pretty bad the second half of the year like august and september he was striking out a ton then average just falling down he went from batting like third or fourth to batting like ninth to try to get him out of his slump 
now he just needs to make the adjustment back. Sometimes players never make that adjustment. Just look at guys like Aristides Aquino and Kyle Lewis. Your mean Mercedes. A league adjusts to them and then they just disappear. Here we go with this next one. I think Ellie De La Cruz has shown enough in the minor leagues, though, that he'll be okay. If you look at Kyle Lewis's career stats in the minors, he was always like a 260 hitter in the minors, which isn't all that impressive. Lamont Wade fell short, too, says box for Bud. Late night Lamont. Whatever happened to him? He was a pretty good pinch hitter for you guys. Hunter Lath Latham, Latham just grabbed Bowman Inception. Spot there when that comes out. All right, I'll add you to the list. Thank you very much. That will come out, I think, next week. That's due out. But I wanted to get all these breaks put on the list. All right, so let's get Hunter in there. Bowman Inception round one. Thank you very much, Hunter. Dwayne Middleton just became a Patreon member. Thanks, Dwayne. I wonder who's going to pick up J.D. Davis, speaking of the, the uh, Giants. J.D. Davis was slated to be their starting third baseman, and then they went out and signed Matt Chapman, and then J.D. Davis, I think, was just released today. Not a terrible player. So he'll probably be picked up by somebody. He had a pretty good season last year. Scott says, prove me wrong. Get me two autos. We'll see what happens. I think we'll find two autos total, but here's the next box. This would be box number four. Nothing too crazy yet. Here's an upside down Houston Astros silver foil card. So far, one auto, two relics. Make it one auto, three relics. However, it's another Blue Jays hit. So the Blue Jays can celebrate that they've got a Vladdy to go along with their autograph. This one is for Josh Cliff. It's numbered to 50. 35 of 50 Vladdy gold relic right there. Not a bad card. Scott said, I predicted one and three. I was pretty, well, if you predicted one and three so far, that's pretty specific. There's still two boxes left. What's your final? I got two autos, four relics is my prediction. Mario says, I pulled a redemption card, Ken Griffey Jr. Blueprint Auto. Do you think it's going to be numbered? Yeah, I think it probably will be numbered. Usually veteran autos, they don't sign that much. So a lot of times they're, they're numbered. That might be numbered to 10. That's a really good card. You've got uh, at least probably a $500 card there, I would imagine. All right, so we got the hit out of this box. These will just mostly be base cards. Maybe there'll be a numbered card mixed in. I think I see it. It'll be a gold. I we'll hope it's going to be a rookie. There's Ellie De La Cruz. Insert rookie. And we've got Luis Robert. It'll be numbered to 299 on the orange IC. And we've got another numbered card right after a Max Freed to 2024. It's not too bad. A couple numbered cards. Luke Rally's in there as well. Greatest hits of Ryan Sandberg, who's Chris Randall's guy. And now we're down to just two boxes left. Kyle Ripken Jr. Looks like Hunter grabbed one in Bowman Inception for the second round. We've got two rounds of Bowman Inception. He's got one in both. Thank you very much. I'll get you added to that one too. Put that on the master list and save it. Hopefully that picks up some steam next week when Bowman Inception is ready to be released. Two boxes left here to go through. Let's see what we can find. We're at one autograph. 
three relics with two boxes left here at 12.30 a.m. Probably the last two boxes of the night, I would imagine. We covered a lot of ground tonight. We've been breaking nonstop since 9.35 or so. Ike says, okay, I'm finally here. I know you guys miss me. Ike's in the house with two boxes left to go. To go, Probably 10 minutes left. But he made it. Let's see if we can find a big hit here to welcome him. Jason says those silver packs are going to be fire. There could be an autograph in one of those. In fact, I'll go ahead and say there's going to be one autograph in those silver packs. We've opened a bunch of silver packs tonight. The first batch of them had an autograph, but there hasn't been anything since. So we're kind of kind of feel like we're due for an auto. All righty, here we go with this next one. Man, I'm going to be really tired of looking at 2024 tops this week. I'm going to be staring at these cards. It's been nothing but 2024 tops tonight for hours. And now i got to do every single card and sort them out. So I might start to get a little sick sick of this design by Friday. There's Sonny Gray. We pulled his autograph already tonight. And there it is. It's a relic. Uh-oh. So it's now four relics and one autograph. So for everybody that said three autos were going to come from these six boxes, unfortunately, you're wrong. Game used jersey card for the Philadelphia Phillies. So the Phillies get their relic. That one's going to go to Travis Vance. Maybe you'll get lucky. There'll be an, an extra autograph in a box somewhere. It's happened before. Ike painted a really great picture. Portrait of Ellie De La Cruz. He sold it. That was a great one. Yeah, that was a very nice one. I like that one. You could probably check it out on his Instagram page. He posts his paintings there. Chris says he's all done buying Series 1 now until Big League comes out. Big League's going to be... A fun one for sure. I hope the hobby boxes are good like they used to be with like every other hobby box giving you a hit. And I wonder how much they're going to be. Like, are they going to be $60 a box or $50? i am kind of guessing $60. I don't know if they... Do they put those on sale yet? The big league cases or boxes. Let me check it out. 2020. Four tops big league. We'll go ahead and blow out cards. Usually, sometimes they don't put stuff up until like a week before it's going to come out. They have it up at fifty dollars a box. Is the pre order price fifty bucks? That sounds about right. I wouldn't be surprised if they raise it up to sixty though. I feel like last year it was sixty, fifty nine, ninety five. There's South Frelick. Number to 199, and we've got a Masataka Yoshida, which will be numbered to 2024. Joe says hangers are the way, and hobby boxes are poop. So, well, we just did 64 hanger boxes tonight already, and we only found one autograph in 64 boxes. So, maybe Jumbo is still the way to go, even though there's not a lot of numbered cards in there anymore. Scott says, you should do a showdown between two members, like a game of war. Lowest number card wins. I'd watch. We do those on Saturday night, actually, with multiple people in those, those box wars. We call it the Saturday showdown. We just, uh, what did we do last week? Like This past week, I think we were live for like three or four hours until like 2 a.m., something like that. And I think it was technically 1.30 a.m., but then the, the time changed and went to 2.30 a.m. I don't know. I know I was up late this Saturday night. All right, here we go. Last box of this round and last box of the night. Will we find autograph number two? I hope we do because it's always good to find another auto and that it would be that my prediction was correct. I feel like typically hobby boxes give you about one out of three. Gives you an auto or so. All right, here we go. How many numbered cards do we find in the hangers? I didn't count them up, but probably maybe like every other box had one. It wasn't anything crazy. Maybe one in every two and a half. Aren't the autos one in every 20? One in every 20 packs? No way. If that was the case, every box would have an autograph. 
there's a hit in one in every 20 packs, but a lot of them are going to be relics. We've already seen four out of five have relics. Ike wants to do a box war with 1991 Donruss. And whoever hits the Elite, the Donruss Elite card, wins. That would be, that'd be crazy. We got a crimped card right there. Freddie Peralta. It's got all the top all messed up. The Kevin Biggio has a little bit of it too. Luckily, it's just those two cards. They're just, they're just base cards anyway. Shohei Otani. All right, are we going to get that hit here? It's not happening yet. Hopefully, it's going to be an autograph. Jorge Mateo's upside down. Am I going to be selling hangers tomorrow night? I do have another case of hangers that I could probably sell some. I got to make sure I keep at least 32 for the hanger round next week. There's Ellie De La Cruz. And I think I have like a case and a half left, so I should have enough. All right, one stack left to finish this evening off. And then we also have the silver packs. Looking for one final autograph here. Let's see if we can get it done. Trying to make some room here in this last box. What did I do with my little sign? Wasn't there a little sign here that said Hobby 2? Did I put that away already? Put it back out there again. Hobby 2. Ross says I passed a black parallel. Oh, brother. I already put it away. I'll get it when I'm sleeving all these up. It's somewhere in the box. I have no idea where it would be. And if I put it in the front, it would be one of these. Yeah, I'll just find it... Uh, when I'm sleeving it up. It was in the last stack. I don't know what the last stack was because I just was putting these in random spots in the box to fill it out. But when these all get sorted out, it'll get sorted into the team stack like they always do. I've missed one of ones before and then found them and sorted them out and got them into the stack. Well, we know it wasn't an LED La Cruz or Jason Dominguez because I take those ones out all the time, whether they're base cards or not. Let's see if we have... Oh, no. It's not an autograph. It's a very dirty, dirty Freddie Freeman game-used pant relic card right there. So, man, only one autograph out of six boxes. That one's going to go to the Los Angeles Dodgers, which is for Brian... So Brian Jackson gets that one, but where all, where were all the autographs? I was thinking two would be safe, but only one auto from six boxes. Hobby boxes, probably not the way to go. I'm back on Team Jumbo. Derek Jeter right there, and I guess we could find a bonus hit within the silver packs. There's Buxton. The final card is actually a numbered card for the Detroit Tigers. All right, let's wrap this one up with the silver packs. I'm going to call one auto, one parallel out of these to wrap up this evening. Thanks for being here, everybody, for the last exactly three hours. We're just hitting the 180 minute mark right now in the next 15 seconds. So we've been here for three hours tonight. Did a whole bunch of 2024 tops. Cleaned out a lot of breaks that were left over from last week. Getting room ready for Bowman Inception and Signature Series next week. All right, let's see what we've got. I'm calling one auto. One parallel. So far, neither have shown up still nothing still nothing man this could be a shutout 
It is a shutout, man. The Jumbo Boxes always gave us something out of the Silver Packs. Hobby just not being very generous tonight at all. One autograph and nothing out of the Silver Packs. But that'll be it for tonight. So Hobby comes to a close. We do have mixer rounds that we'll sell for next week. We'll continue selling those if you'd like to grab spots in those. We'll have, looks like, some Bowman Inception and Signature Series making their way into the breaks next week as well. Hopefully those all come in in time and they don't get pushed back any farther. So, man, that was a lot of cards. We opened up, looks like, three 3,200-count boxes. That's three four-row boxes worth of cards tonight. A whole bunch of shipping to be done. Ross, I'll when I sort them out, I'll keep an eye on all the Marlins. But thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your evening. And I will see you all tomorrow. I'm not sure what video I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm thinking about maybe an awesome box and maybe a Patreon subscription box. Maybe put those head to head. Or maybe heading out to uh, Target and doing a Target video. Who knows? We'll see. And then uh, Throwback Thursday coming up. And then I know that Friday, and I think Friday and Saturday are going to be March Madness videos, episodes two and three, as I have to wait to the next auction to auction all those cards off. So check us out for our next auction on Thursday night. We'll have DeHawk's cards, it looks like. And um, we'll also have the March Madness stuff. And yeah, we'll, we'll be live with Whatnot tomorrow. So I'll put a reminder out there. Whatnot Wednesday, probably around 9 o'clock again tomorrow night. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your evening. And I will see all of you tomorrow.